Um, what's good? Music kind of stinky. What do you want to listen to? This is that copyright free shit that they have on uh, your Nokia. On your plug phone. When you plug Colin, this is what. This is their ringtone. Play some still life? Still life? What's still life? Is that a band? Still life music? Is that piano? Nick Bryant! Welcome back for 13 months. Let's keep the good work, dog. Thank you, Nick. Good, good to see you. No way, this might just be what I need to bus. Bussin', bussin', bussin'. 20 minutes of what? Um, so we, 20 minutes to let people get the notification until, and we're just going to be chitting, chatting, saying whatever, until we start recording stories for tomorrow's video. What's blue and tastes like red paint? Probably blue paint, right? How many stories you got for tonight? Uh, I would say we got, I think it was 17 again. It's kind of convenient. Should you run now? Like jogging for exercise? Yeah, you could listen to the stream while you do it. We could distract you. We will be chatting and chitting. Fasty, thank you, dude. Good to see ya. What are you guys up to? How's everybody's week so, so fair? I remember there was always a kid on my Facebook growing up that always, he would just like, uh, it was so funny, he would just like spam like Facebook statuses that says, how is everybody's day so fair? <laughs> I just always thought it was so funny. Been so busy and keep missing your lives, so I'm glad I got this one. Hell yeah. Yeah, if you ever miss an old one, I'm now, I'm now putting them in the, well, I mean, they were always in like a playlist, right? But now you'll start seeing them pop up as in the live tab. So hopefully more people are able to discover it after the fact and then maybe want to join during. I'm listening to you, Noel, and watching Chucky. Am I Noel? Joel, I've been listening to your videos religiously for like five years to sleep and now I can't fall asleep without them. I'm addicted. Good, good. The plan is unfolding how we've envisioned my meta quest 2 came today and i'm watching you on vr it's so cool interesting does it have like a virtual room or something or are you in like a theater i'm on early today yeah a little bit earlier now i got my sleep schedule figured out you know there was uh certain certain days to start off with that was kind of rough but honestly, it only took like three days before I started like sleeping pretty full nights. But I will say the um, the thing that I got for snoring, the fucking like head strap that kind of keeps your mouth shut so you breathe through your nose and keeps, you know, your mouth from... Because I guess what happens is your tongue just like flaps back into your throat and then you're like, you know. So if you can keep your jaw shut, it's a little uncomfortable. And sometimes you wake up in the morning with a bit of a tight jaw from the boogeyman having sex with your face. At least that's what I was told. Um, you do feel a lot better because you're not waking up from choking on tongue. <laughs> you have a ball gag here, 3,000. You can find it on Amazon. What's up, Miss Bunny? How you doing? Been good. And Seven Leaf Clover, thank you for the five gifters. Two, Elvis Press Play. Terry Para, Alexander 2410FCB. 
Chris Johnstone, and Tiffany. Y'all now have access to bonus content. Use the hostage tape. I'll be honest with you, the hostage tape didn't work on me just because uh, it doesn't really stick very well to facial hair. How's Enlisted going? It's honestly, s me and my friend group sadly got bored of Enlisted. I still want to play it from time to time, but I also like, you know how like sometimes you play a game so much it's like just part of your muscle memory to like log in and like trying to play other stuff. Like unless you got like people like pushing you towards it, it's just, you know, it kind of lose touches. But it is a good game. I will say though, because it has hardcore free to play mobile style monetization and like the grind is insane. I think that's one of those things that like keeps that game from being more popular than it is. The other night I was listening to a recent video and accidentally went to sleep and ended up having this weird dream where you were playing hide and seek and this figure kept following me. We were playing it? Did he find us? Do you have a day job or do you only do YouTube? Uh, just YouTube as my main gig. My main gag. I said my name a year ago. Chandra. Again, please. Chandra. My favorite artist? Mmm... Mm. I don't know. I don't really have one, you know what I mean? Because it's just like every song, it's like choosing your favorite kid. Obviously, some of them drain you of your bank account and get addicted to heroin and whatnot, but usually music doesn't do that. And the fact that you liked it in the beginning, it stays very consistent, you know? And obviously there are some artists that maybe you come back to, but like usually flow from one thing to the next, depending on the mood. And obviously there's ones that you like a little bit more, but I wouldn't, you know, I'm, I remember there's a guy I worked with. He had a whole ass red hot chili peppers tattoo on his tricep. And, you know, I, I like the red hot chili peppers and stuff, but I never, the amount, you know, how devoted he was to going to like almost every show and traveling around to see them and stuff and it becoming, you know, I just, I could never see myself like ever really liking any particular artist in any form um, to the point that you actually get something inked on your skin. But, you know, I'm also not that person, so I can't really understand their brain. They didn't feel scared or anything, they just kept following me around the house, but we was in me and the random dream people. Oh, you and the random, oh yeah. Leave <laughs> your kid covered in poop. Yeah. It sucks. I'm your artist, good, good, good. You have a tattoo of Little Wayne? That's good, Little Wayne's worth it. I'm gonna get one of him too, so we can match. Do I have any other tattoos? Uh, the only one I have is just on the lower back. It says, Abandon all hope, ye who enter here. And then a big arrow pointing to my asshole. Favorite topic or content out of all the stories you've read? I would say what we're about to read tonight with the paranormal stuff. Just because it's like you don't know what you're going to get. You know what I mean? It could be some whacked out shit. Some strange stuff. And I just enjoy that. I enjoy the, the weird and wacky and wild. I've been waiting a long time for paranormal stories. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, I don't know how I lost track of them, but I'm glad we're getting another volume out there. I hope it's worth it, though. I, I really tried to cycle through the most upvoted ones, as well as submissions over email and stuff, and... Hoping for the best. Joel, I feel bad for quitting my minimum wage job. I'm just trying to be selfish and put myself first. Yeah, you know, that's fine. I, You know, as long as you have a plan to, you know, as long as you have a plan to, like, pay for your, you know, stuff you might need for insurance or bread. 
<laughs> I guess, you know, car car payment, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, sometimes that's, you know, you, know, you only live once. And, you know, I had to quit my job to do YouTube. Granted, I was doing YouTube on the side prior to doing that, so I kind of had some leniency there. Um, what the fuck? I swear I just heard... Is it... Wait, is it thunderstorming? One second. Ah, oh, crap. It is... It is thunderstorming out, so I'm really hoping that it doesn't knock the power off and therefore the... router, you know what I mean? The modem. There were tornado watches out from Northeast Ohio. Okay, yeah, thankfully around here we don't get any naders, but... If I do get knocked off, I will probably <laughs> Have to reset the stream and whatnot. Does YouTube give the big bucks? I guess you'll have to try it out and see what happens. Favorite conspiracy? Probably WTC7. But I also like the concept of Hollow Earth stuff. I like the idea of like lizard people just running everything I never really understood I do miss those days though I miss the days when like YouTube would send you down some like insane conspiracy rabbit hole you know now if you want to like find any of that kind of stuff to like fall asleep to you gotta I don't know you have to like end up on different websites and I just don't really have the energy to do so anymore because, I mean, I used to watch so fucking many of them, mainly to fall asleep and just kind of, like, zone out, too. But uh, it was mainly just for fun. And I, I, I re it really felt more like a fit, like a little fictional experience, you know? There were some things where you're like, whoa, is the government got, like, underground bunkers and stuff with that they closed off because the alien greys were having a little civil war down there or some shit, you know? And it's fun to think about it, or whatever. The Shane Dawson ones did it. Yeah, right. Well, he was, yeah, it is kind of, I always thought about that. I'm like, he, you know, before he got canceled, um, he was one of those, like, sort of untouchable you poopers that, you know, could just say and do whatever he wanted and still get, like, a ton of views. And then as soon as he started venturing into that, you know. Well, honestly, I never watched any of his, though, so I don't really even know what he talked about. Do you ever scare yourself reading these or you become desensitized? Uh, I'm desensitized at this point. I don't, I don't feel a single thing. I think that's why I enjoy the paranormal stuff because it's actually more interesting to me than like just some creep being creepy. Because like a creep being creepy is something, you know, me as a guy can kind of deal with. You know, you just kill them or whatever. <laughs> Not that you should, but, um, but you know what I mean? In a self-defense, if I was put in a self-defense situation, um, but like with a ghost... Or some sort of weird thing. Um, it's a little more scurry. Not as conspiracy, but the Diet Love Pass was my favorite deep dives. Yeah, I covered that on the, um, I think, Unsolved Mysteries, like, first video, I do believe, on my channel. You'll have to let me know how it is if you ever check it out. I made your year. You're welcome. Uh, guys... Researchers are checking out stuff. He says, I have a rabbit tattoo to my ass that Jailer looks doesn't see, looks closer. <laughs> he falls in the rabbit hole. Grayson Deepstra. Welcome to the Buttersock Cult. You now have access to bonus content on the bonus content playlist. Thank you, thank you. But yeah, guys, thanks for being here. Thanks for asking fun questions ask whatever you want talk to whoever you want just be nice and uh yeah we're chilling the jailer looks at the guy's ass i don't see the rabbit look closer the inmate says the jailer has his face right near the close to the brown eye and kale can't see it <laughs> this is scarier than those two sentence horror stories 
I'd like to see if there's enough fire lookout tower stories to get a video out of it. I bet they've seen some stuff. That would be interesting. Fire lookout. They're pretty isolated out there, aren't they? The fire lookout people. Did you ever do a deep dive into Nikola Tesla on the reads from the CIA website? Yeah, I never know, like, you know, why, why would the CIA ever divulge any of their information? You know what I mean? When most of it is, like, redacted bullshit anyway. So, like, why would they ever give you even a morsel of information that was correct? Um, but, yeah, the Nikola Tesla thing with, like, the free energy coming from, like, the ionosphere. I always thought that was sweet. How they, like, raided his labs or whatever. I don't even know. Do you wear compression stockings for the gym? Been thinking about getting some compression stockings? I don't think so. I've worn um, knee knee wraps, but they're just like, you know, the ones you pull up whenever you're doing squats and stuff just to help give some support. Um, the dude that made the water engine. Yeah, I remember that. You're unemployed right now. My cat just died and all I've been doing is listening to Preacher's Daughter on repeat and drinking Shriatra. It's all right, Danielle. You just gotta... I mean, I'm sorry about the cat thing and the unemployment thing, but we gotta be solutions-oriented. We gotta f plan our next move. Has David Politis, contact, or author of Missing 411, ever contacted you? He's never contacted me. I remember, like, early on when I did Missing 411 stories in the true crime sort of documentary-style fashion, there was a lot of his audience in my comment section, like leaving a lot of hate and like mad and all that kind of stuff saying that I like stole the idea or whatever and but I mean all of it was you know none of it was like from his book it was just the concept of people going missing in like national forests and mainly not even completely that it was also just people going missing uh in a wilderness type setting so it was pretty the only thing that was similar was just the name you know um, but he himself has never reached out he's never been rude or anything like that and and you know to show respect to him as an author i you know put you know references to his project over on youtube the can am i think it's called or something um in, a, in the different videos so you know no hard feelings it's whatever pi sent ever sent me a story yeah i've, I have quite a few personal or uh, private investigator videos stories and things like that First time listening live, but welcome, Jaden. Um, we got another minute here, and we will switch to recording a little spookier mood. Like I said, we're going to be recording some paranormal stuff. Anybody new, you're going to hear a lot of flub ups and mess ups, and a lot of like ADD style going all over the place, uh, interaction with the chat, and not staying focused. So, if that's something that frustrates you, I would probably say normal videos are the way to go but otherwise we're just having a good time here maxin chillaxin and even a criminal offense lawyer for my case you probably need a criminal defense lawyer i was drunk and assaulted a very mean police officer oh shit unlucky well i hope you can find one and not have your bank account completely drained We've well, been gaming lately. Ah, oh, man. I haven't really touched Helldivers in a while. And, uh... Pfft, you know. Typical Overwatch shit from time to time. I saw there was Season 10. They still haven't nerfed Orisa or Sojourn. And also, I guess they're now banning people for... Profanity. Watch y'all profanity. I don't know. Blizzard, Blizzard, it's so stupid. Like, Overwatch is one of those things where, like, there's so much opportunity there to build up trust with your audience by actually, like, not making half the tanks completely unbearable to play or play against by imagining different ideas or taking, like, your community, especially the streamers, like, ideas into consideration. And they just don't. They just, they're, they're like, angry children they would rather like ban you for saying a poo poo word than never balance the game it's just fucking cringe especially after how long has it been seven fucking years 
I remember the story about the PI about a husband suspected of cheating, but the PI found out he was doing stuff. Oh, yeah, that was... You like chimichangas? Probably. I'll eat it all. Or is that a type of dog? Either way, I'm eating it. Oh, no, it's not. Dude, I... Oh, wait, chimichanga. Yeah, deep fried, right? That does look fucking good. Yeah, I love all food. Favorite type of cuisine? I, you know, I don't, I love all of it. Like, one, but one of my favorite things to do is just to go to like Indian restaurants and shit and just get all the slop and just like mix it into a big slop pile and, and just eat it, you know? Like my friends give me shit for mixing everything together and saying that, you know, it's, I don't even know. Like they they said it's like what do you why do you mix it? I'm like dude, when you mix food together in a big slop pile, you get a delicious pile of slop. And it's fucking awesome. And the flavors, you know, complement each other and all sorts of crazy shit. <laughs> Let's read father you should try ma man mango. What's mango? The slop kamonjo Indian is amazing. I, I said that. I just said it's amazing. It's delicious. Do you like diamond paintings? What is that? Yeah, dude, I would eat it right from a trough. It's that fucking good. Yeah, and you don't have to chew as much, right? You can just fucking drink it. <laughs> Alright, use the mobile sleep surprises, maybe rough read. Okay, here we are. Sweet, here we go. Paranormal baby. Please don't be a flop. Lord, please let these be scary and authentic. Shooting near city over guacamole. I think I saw that. Yeah, like the guy went behind the counter to get, I don't know, probably pissed off he didn't get enough guacamole. And then people tried to like stop him, which guys, if you're getting paid minimum wage and someone wants to do crime in your place, do not sacrifice yourself to like stop their dumb shit. Just let them do their dumb shit and it's not worth your fucking <laughs> body. If someone's stealing, I know it might in your head. There's like this instinctual thing where you're like, someone's stealing, and I am a representative of said situation and establishment. I better intervene. No, no, you should not. <laughs> you should fucking run. You should get put as much space between you and that person as possible, because if they're willing to do that, they're probably also willing to fucking hurt you. And it's just... Yeah, the guacamole, exactly. I'm 27, my husband is 30, and our daughter is 1. This story happened last night, so I'm running off like 2 hours of sleep, and my daughter wasn't into the idea of sleeping in this morning. This morning. <laughs> This story happened last night, so I'm running off like two hours of sleep, and my daughter wasn't into the idea of sleeping in this morning. Now, to start, my husband, our one-year-old, and myself live in a rental and have been here for three years now. When we first moved in, there was a random doorbell that would go off. There isn't a doorbell here that we can see, and we thought that they were probably... God fucking damn it. Also, I listened to like one of, I listened to the Walmart video when I went to go get on my way to get groceries. And one thing that I'm kind of irked me about listening to myself, I had like this like sense of anxiety the whole time because I never really like actually sit and listen to myself. But the one thing that kind of irked me was how I there's a well, you know what? I'm not even going to say it cuz then I don't want it to be in your guys' heads whilst listening. Um 
yeah, fuck, it doesn't even matter. But I do want to, like, get better at not having, like, flubs. When we first moved in, there was a random doorbell that would go off. There isn't a doorbell here that we can see, and we thought that there was probably a battery-powered doorbell stored in the attic that is probably dying or malfunctioning. That eventually stopped, and we forgot about it for the most part. My husband also used to see what he called shadow people and hear footsteps and have horrible sleep paralysis dreams. I always chalked it up to his mind playing tricks on him or him have him have it a hoobie to hate it. Just say it. Yeah, like, I just, sometimes, okay, so I, I picked this up, and this this is, like, very specific, but I picked up this technique that I actually learned a little bit from listening to Be Busta, and it's not to blame her him or anything, I just thought that it was, like, a good technique that sounded um, good. But basically, it's like, as you're reading, sometimes you hold the last, like, syllables of the word a little bit to allow your brain to kind of like catch up with the next words that are coming so that you can kind of sound like it's flowing together a little bit better and I kind of started doing that to allow myself to not make as many mistakes but sometimes when I hear myself doing it now I kind of I feel like I sound like I am having trouble reading or whatever or it sounds almost like slow or interruptive ish I don't know maybe I'm overthinking it I probably am overthinking it but how does the chat not distract him while he reads it does dude but the live streams keep me sane because if I had to just sit here and record 17 stories by myself I'd be off jacking off half the time anime and weirdness welcome back for 20 months is I've been able to catch you live in a while. I'm a day shifter now. My family and I truly enjoy your terrifying tales. My favorite since 2017. Thank you, Anime and Weirdness. Good to see you. It has been quite some time. You like a little slower, more natural cadence. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. I, I guess I also thought maybe it sounded a bit conversational, too. So maybe it sounds almost like I'm telling the story from a personal perspective. Cause, which is kind of like what you're trying to go for a little bit. I hope Bozo doesn't jack. Danielle, I will honestly say from the I think you should leave skits. There have been a lot of good ones. And I re-watched re season three and I really enjoyed it after my third watch through. <laughs> but that Bozo did the dub skit. I don't know if it can be topped, you know. I really like the Ghost Tour one. That's one of my favorites. But now reflecting back onto the Bozo one, man, like holy fuck, dude. That shit is so funny. I thought this guy's supposed to be bald. I don't, it's like so stupid, but it's so... I just, I just like toilet humor, you know? Couldn't imagine being a day shifter night out through and through. Yeah, I said that for a while too. And um, it's mainly just to avoid dealing with like the crazy shit that happens on day shift. But now it's like I, I recently switched my sleep schedule. I'm just feeling really good about it. Did you ever see Stein's Gate? I have not seen Stein's Gate. What's that? You love me, Lutry. Thank you, Carl. Good to see you. Mangu is made up of mushed plantains, red onions, fried eggs, fried cheese, and fried salami. It's Dominican breakfast, dinner, and lunch. That sounds amazing. I will have to ask some Dominican friends to cook that for me. Talked about my friends when we listen to your videos. I don't think it sounds bad at all. I mentioned that you were just being be Oh, that's funny. Yeah, no, he's I mean, you know, and he's, he does great too. But it was something that as I listened to it, I'm like, is that a good technique, or do I sound? But you know, honestly, if I made it thus far, it's like who fucking cares anymore? <laughs> yeah. Do you know how to fucking drive? No, not everybody knows how to do everything. <laughs> <laughs> I saw somebody use that meme for like Jesus take the wheel and then Jesus who was born 2,000 years ago suddenly teleporting to your car I, I don't know what any of this is <laughs> some guy from your church walked up to you and gave you three butterfly knives nice dude I wouldn't mind learning how to use a butterfly knife that shit's pretty pretty hardcore Say hi to Brazil. Hello, Brazil. Brazil. I 
I always chalked it up to his mind playing tricks on him or him trying to scare me. It's been a few years since any of that has happened though and for the year that our daughters live with us, zero spooky things happened until last night. My husband works the night shift so it's just me and the baby most nights. Well last night... Well last night my daughter wakes up around midnight so I get her and bring her to my bed. She's back asleep and I'm wide awake scrolling through Hulu. As I'm searching for a show to watch, I kid you not, the foot of my bed, frame, and all lifts like half a foot off the ground and slams back down. My daughter is still asleep, but I'm immediately frozen in fear. My first thought is, there's someone under my bed, but I quickly realize that I... I What's up, Fasty? This is where the magic happens. And Ollie, what's going on, Ollie? <laughs> Rest in peace, Jesus. He would have loved Birkenstocks. I saw that meme too, but I actually have no idea what Birkenstock is. Can somebody fill me in on the Birkenstock uh, lore? Gobbling the air. <sighs> yummy, yummy, yummy. There is someone under my bed. No, oh, fuck. That sounded weird. My first thought is, there is someone under my bed. But I quickly realized that I couldn't even fit under my bed, so this is far-fetched, but not any better. I quickly scoop my daughter up, football style, stand on my bed and jump off the bed as far as possible and run out of the room. I grab our gun, call my husband, shaking and sobbing to please come home, and then call my mom to pick us up. We're a one-vehicle family. At that point, our kitchen lights start to dim until they were completely off, which was the last straw for me. I took my daughter and went to the front yard in only a t-shirt and panties until my husband got home about ten minutes later. He did a sweep of the house and nothing seemed out of place, which weirdly only made me more scared, like I would rather a stranger be under my bed than some invisible force, but I still went to my mother's. I finally fell asleep about 3.30 and my husband picked us up at 5am when he got off of work. I'm afraid to sleep here, so I've been awake ever since. I don't know how I'm going to be here alone at night anymore. I'm trying to debunk what happened and find an explanation, but I just can't. It may not sound scary to you, but I had never felt so scared in my life, and scary stuff is ten times worse when you have a baby to protect. What do I do? How do I bless my home correctly without making things worse? Also, I don't drink or do any drugs, so it's not like I was tripping or something. My mom is a paranormal buff, and my husband and I agreed, after one too many crappy spouses and scary movies, to always believe each other when we say something is up, so they both believe me, but I still feel crazy. Now, this has turned into a rambling post, but it's... Uh, oh. Rambling, bambling. I should probably end on the crazy part. Hey, Desert Rose, good to see you. Thank you, thank you. Jesus would have loved to have skateboarded and surfed. I don't even know, dude. Jesus wears only sandals, no bottoms. Jesus would have had an OnlyFans. But then it was like an old pull the rug out trick. You get there and then you get preached to. When did you become a member? You must have got, like, gifted or something. My mom is a paranormal buff, and my husband and I agreed, after one too many crappy spouses and scary movies, to always believe each other when we say something is up, so they both believe me, but I still feel crazy. Jump up and down in the bed, yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> your my how's the gym gym is good I uh, today wasn't necessarily a strength day even though I did kind of what the class was doing with like squat and stuff but then we did like a circuit workout where it was like do 65% of your three rep max so like it was going to have me do like 275 on the squat but then you would have to do it the f it was like five total rounds um, but it was like minute one was 10 squats minute two was max air squats and then minute three was just like casual on the bike and holy fuck dude like heavy squats like fast for like 10 it, it's not good man I don't know. It just felt weird. Like, it definitely felt a little bit bodybuild-esque. But it also... Sometimes I look at, like, CrossFit stuff. Yeah, I mean, it was like an imam, I guess. But sometimes I look at CrossFit stuff, and I look back on my days of, like, training CrossFit specifically for, like, so long. And even though it's, you know, for someone who's new, it's cool because you're doing, like, heavy... You're, you're doing compound lifts. You're doing interesting stuff. You're challenging your body, whatever, whatever. You're building up cardio. But overall, like, whenever you get back into it after just solely doing, like, strength or bodybuilding stuff for the most part, it kind of just feels like if you do it too much, it's just a way to, like, really, really, really fatigue yourself for really no other purpose than to, like, burn calories. Because the one unfortunate thing about CrossFit I've seen with people is, like, they can do it for years and years and years but I've seen people who do CrossFit consistently for years and they still get fucking fat you know and it's just like and their body like sort of stays the same the only person I've ever seen like really like their body kind of like trans like who's just a normal person not like one of those CrossFit games steroid heads you know it's like that their body like really really changes is a friend's kid who was like starting out they were like a teenager so it was like over their teenage years where your body can kind of adapt to like really anything um, and then they started to get that like CrossFit build or whatever but is it not strength training? It is strength training. Don't get me wrong. There is strength training to it. But just like with the workout of the day afterwards, which is just like high intensity interval training shit, it just builds up a lot of like fatigue that you're kind of just like, you better be eating a lot of calories and getting a lot of fucking sleep. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> to, to really be able to maintain progression. And then also, yeah, if you do, like, some of the workouts too fast, there is a lot of prone to injuries and shit. And it's just like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> What's up, Mariba? Yeah, I talk about, like, three things. I need to expand my, my knowledge of the world. I got nothing interesting to say sometimes. Let the stories do the talking. <laughs> She's the anime, you're the weirdness. Perfect. I was about six or seven years old, and my mother and I were on a routine grocery run to our local Walmart. I remember getting out of the car and walking up to the entrance. We had sort of par whoops. We had parked sort of in the back, so we had a little walk to the front. As we walk up, I see a homeless man asking for change from every person that walks by. He asks the woman in front of us for change, and as she turns him down, he scoffs and begins to say something rude towards the woman. My mother and I walk past him with haste to avoid conflict as he seems to be extremely agitated. We get inside and get our groceries and everything seems fine. 
As we load up and begin to leave, I remember my mother pulling out two dollars to specifically give the man as he is presumably still at the entrance begging. My mother, trying to avoid conflict, wants to hand him the money and be on her way so we don't end up getting harassed as the woman before us did. As we walk out, I raise my arms to my mother in little kid fashion to be picked up as I'm scared of the encounter we're about to have with the man. My mother picks me up and we begin to leave the store. Before the man can ask us for money, my mother hands him the cash and we walk away conflict-free. I'm being held by my mother at this point with my head facing behind her. As we're about halfway to our car, I look up from the pavement and look at the man whom is staring directly at me with the most sinister face. At this point, his features seem distorted and what I can only describe as demonic. He's smiling and sticking his tongue out almost to his chest. He lets out a long hiss as his eyes roll into the back of his head, seemingly invisible to the other people passing him. And I still to this day do not understand how I was so far away but heard his hiss as if though it was right next to my ear. I'm sure it could be dismissed as homeless guys tend to be part reptile and I think that's what he may have been, but no, I'm just kidding. Fuck. Sam Winchester, who's that? I'm sure it could be dismissed as homeless guy, as the homeless. I'm sure it could be dismissed as the homeless guy was on drugs, but I think truly this was a demon. It was messed up for fuck. It messed me up for a really long time, and to this day, is a big factor in my belief of the paranormal. You guys will have to think of a uh, title for this paranormal video because I've been naming, kind of naming my paranormal videos a little bit of like more extravagant clickbaity bullshit, you know. Let's look at the last one. Uh, 15 stories to whip your cock out. What? Did I change that? I'm just kidding. What's it called? Um... Uh, Oh, yeah, ghost. Okay, so the ghost ones from Japan are kind of straightforward, but there was another one. Where the hell is it? I guess it was a while before the Japanese. Oh, okay, yeah, like 15 true scary paranormal stories to haunt your dreams, etc., etc. Dude, I gotta do more dark web stories. I mean, that shit's at half a million views, which is kind of... That's kind of big for me. Joy, have you heard the boyfriend gets hit by a car ASMR? I should do it. That is funny. How long is it? It's just, like, quick. But yeah, this one. Eight true scary paranormal stories to make you question reality. Which was kind of a sick collab, because, like, there's an actual live-action thing at the beginning. 17 ghost videos to bus, to be bussing to. Have you ever done voiceovers for cartoons, anime, or video games? Yeah, I was in um, Dragon Ball Super. I was in the newer um, Invincible show. I was in uh, Halo Infinite and Halo Reach. I was also in uh, Super Mario brothers the original game on SNES I was uh, Princess Peach Mario. Brooklyn Gonzalez welcome back for 35 months of 17 ghost videos to help you bust a nut oh yes one piece I was in one piece I was I was uh, half of the one piece Matt Mercer was the other half. Yo, Albert, what's good, dude? 
Have you heard of a store YouTuber Tales from the Trip? Not the Comedy Central version. Reminds me of you a bit. Nice. Yeah, I think they've been in here before. Or maybe somebody brought them up, but I, I, I do recall their channel, which is awesome. Years ago, I did some bad trip stories, so I wonder if that sort of inspired it. What if I am the one piece? I'm the two piece. The two piece suit. The two piece bikini. I did watch, I recently, guys, believe it or not, I've been watching anime in recent format, and I'm kind of reminded of exactly why I don't really click on random animes, but I kind of can't look away at this one. It's called uh, Tokyo Sinks 2020. Have you guys seen that shit? I don't even know. It's just, it's just funny as fuck, dude. It's, I mean, because it's just, like, they'll be, like, the whole entire city just went through, like, natural disaster. And they'll be playing some, like, really fucking, like, upbeat music for no reason. Uh, somebody's, like, family can just get, like, squished. And within, like, 15 seconds, everyone's like, ha oh, well. It's about the family we gained along the way. Or, like... I don't know. There's just, there's just some really whacked out shit that happens in it, and they just kind of like move past it, or like have next to like no emotion. It's really strange. And then it's just like it's kind of like if you know, it's going from just like it, it reminds me a little bit of uh, Apocalypse Now. Did you ever see Apocalypse Now, where it's going from like just random fucking event to random event, like a really bad fever dream. And, you know, and I understand, like, going through a uh, crazy 9.0 magnum, magnum, magnitude uh, earthquake can lead to some crazy circumstances. But they're just, it, 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 it's oddly not portrayed in any sort of, like, legitimate fashion. They just kind of, like, end up from one place to the next to the next with and it's it's almost treated like it's a zombie apocalypse style like like all of the roads have cars that are like abandoned right but like nobody's out on the roads you know but i mean i understand a lot of people would probably die from the earthquakes but whenever there's like weeks upon weeks of like nothing going on you think there would be like other individuals out there like exploring the i don't know like the wasteland? I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure if there would be like a wasteland after a big earthquake. Twerk quake. Anyways. Two years ago, I took my wife, my father, and son, then three, to visit family in rural New England and America. They live on a small farm with buildings that date back to the 1700s, which have been restored and modernized, and a guest house which was built about 20 years ago. My cousin is a prolific photographer, and my auntie had decorated most of the rooms in the main house and guest house with her photos. We didn't notice much about the photos in the guest house when we first arrived, probably because we were all jet-lagged. The next morning, after a sound night's sleep, we were sitting in the main family room eating breakfast and making plans for the day when I noticed that my son was keeping his head down and not answering my father whenever he spoke to him, which was unusual because even at that young age they were very close. I looked over to my dad and noticed that he was sitting in front of a photo of a room in a run-down house. The room had a large window with sunlight streaming in casting shadows across the length of the room towards a dark corner. I got an uneasy feeling from the photo, but I really didn't think much more of it. We finished breakfast and all got up from the table and I noticed my son was walking in a wide arc around the end of the table where my father had been sitting. Again, weird behavior, but I just dismissed it as a weird three-year-old thing. Over the next day or so, I noticed him becoming more and more uneasy any time we were at the dining table and doing whatever he could to avoid looking at the photo. I decided to ask him what was wrong, and he answered me very matter-of-factly. The bad man in the picture is looking at me. He's very cold, and 
He's not nice. I looked back at the picture and got instant chills down my spine. There was no man in the picture, but I got the feeling that there was more to it than an empty room. I decided to ask my cousin about the picture and she told me that it was taken at an abandoned farm a bit further upstate. It was one of her favorite pictures but had always given my aunt the creeps so it was moved to the guest house. Over the next couple of days, whenever I would ask my mom about it, he would say thing. Wait, my mom. Over the next couple of days, whenever I would ask... Oh, my son. <laughs> but also that, like, Tokyo... Tokyo Stinks 2020 show. It kind of reminded me... I really do think that a lot more animes should do what... Um, ghost stories did where they just had like comedic kind of like off the cuff random um dub overs and say like comedic things and funny shit and just stupid stuff because like I will honestly say that that show like it's plot it's plot exists but it's just so disconjointed and and like I don't know why I want to use the word non sequitur because that doesn't make any sense, but it's just going from like thing to thing with really no connection to the characters or anything like that. But yeah, if it was just like dubbed over with like dark humor along the way, you would still pretty much get the gist of everything that like happens because most of it's just like it's not about the characters overcoming really anything, it's just like physical demonstrations of stuff occurring so they can move to the next plot point or whatever. So like if they had comedy over it that would be pretty pretty pog i kind of wish that would become like a cultural thing over here in america just like dubbing over what's your opinion on ghost adventures the show wait is that ghost adventures or is that ghost stories did i get it wrong adventures oh oh yeah with those guys i think i watched well, you know what? I'm not honestly sure which one I watched. There's so many fucking ghosts. I just remember going on vacation one time, and we spent more time in the hotel room watching some show that was similar to Ghost Adventures, and it was just so fucking corny. You know what I mean? Like, they just sit there and like, Hello? Is that you out there? And it's just something like... They're like, Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I farted right in my fucking butt. Alright, that's cool, man. <clears throat> Zach Baggins. Is he a hobbit? Joel Wills sing. I can't sing. I can't do it. Coming out of my cage and I've been doing just fine. Baggins's. Baggins's. Over the next couple of days, whenever I would ask my son about it, he would say things like, The bad man is looking at me. He doesn't like me. He wants to hurt me. I didn't think much of it until we were going to bed one night and my son tripped and fell, seemingly for no reason in the middle of the hall, and started crying hysterically. When I asked him if he was okay, he said, The bad man hurt me on the leg. I checked his leg, and sure enough, on the side of his leg there was a large bruise that looked like he had been struck with a blunt object. I didn't want to play into his fears, but I asked him how the bad man could hurt him if... Oh, it's like they put it in quotes, but then also keep it in, like, exposition or whatever. <laughs> I've been doing just fine. Got it, got it. Yeah. It is kind of crazy. Like, someone can be ugly as heck. Just like an absolute freaking globoid. And then if they sing really well, just like instantaneously, you just like look at them like they're an angel from heaven. You're like, whoa, you've got magic powers. She's touching his chest now. She takes off her dress now. 
It's so funny that the, like what is, what's that fucking it's like every song ever tries so hard to be poetic but really all they want to say at the end is just like she wanted to have sex with him he she didn't want to have sex with me she wanted to have sex with him but not me why doesn't she want to have sex with me yeah susan boyle hell yeah dude <laughs> Let me go. I didn't want to play into his fears, but asked him how the bad man could hurt him if he was in the photo downstairs near the table. His answer was enough for me to pack up all our stuff and move to the main house with my aunt, uncle, cousins, and big burly housekeeper right away. He's not down there. He comes up here when we go to bed. We left soon after, so I never found out anything more about the farm where the photo was taken, but I'm sure there was some kind of evil present around it. Evil presence. Fuck. Ooh, oh no. Oh no. What do I do? Okay, there's at the bottom here it says the picture is here, nothing really remarkable to look at. And I almost feel like I shouldn't look at it on the off chance it up a portal but I feel like I also because it's a story about something I feel like the audience kind of has to see it but then doesn't that mean that I'm like transferring this entity to everyone sexual style <laughs> big willy style <laughs> or you know what I mean like fucking via the ring don't do it Take a peek. Oh, you can't even fucking see anything. It's like... The image is like really zoomed out. Hmm. Whatever. Fuck. Well, damn. Alright. We left soon after, so I never found out anything more about the farm where the photo was taken, but I'm sure there was some kind of evil presence around it. Has anybody experienced something similar? And please share if you have. It was just sort of like a picture of like a room, but from like the perspective of blinds not sorry that doesn't make any sense like if you were standing near the blinds like looking down the wall the length of the wall almost like the majority of what was in the image was just like blinds and then I don't even know that's all you could really see in like sort of a room on the right what's up wolf girl smiledog.jpg Does JPEG stand for Japanese pig? Is that where that comes from? Hey, see you, Amber. Have a good night. Deepy. Jump up. Jump. Jump, jump. Come on. Come on. Good boy. Yay. All right. Sometimes, like, he'll want my attention and scratch on shit, but sometimes if I tell him to, like, a location to go to, he'll go there and then just chill there. He's like, okay, that was my purpose for right now. Joint picture expert group. Oh, okay, thank you for clearing that. It's not Japanese pig.
When I was 14, I had a strange encounter that still puzzles me to this day. On the weekends, I'd sometimes go to my mother's place, as my parents are divorced. The house she lived in was converted into several small apartments. It was a creepy old farmhouse. The house was at least 150, maybe 200 years old. My mom told me off and... Wait, what? My mom told me off and on of strain. What? My mom told me off and on of strange sounds she'd been... Oh, on and off. Okay, jeez. Oh, off and on. Okay. I don't know why that confused the shit out of my head. My mom told me off and on of strange sounds she'd been hearing and seeing in the corners of her eyes. Feeling of... Feeling of... Hmm... My mom told me off and on of strange sounds that she'd been hearing and seeing things in the corner of her eyes, feeling like she was being watched. This one particular evening when I spent the night, I brought my N64 because my mom would go to bed early and I'd still be up for a few more hours. I still remember to this day what game I was playing, WWF No Mercy. I was sitting Indian style on the floor playing the story mode. I just finished a mission in the game and set down the controller to the left of me, behind me. Directly behind me was a recliner, and I'll never forget what I saw next. I went to grab the controller and saw what appeared to be a hoof, like a horse next to the c Blech. A hoof. He's sitting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, it's Jamaican pig. Yeah, JPEG was invented in Jamaica. Hey, thanks, Thomas. Good to see you. I went to grab the controller and saw what appeared to be a hoof, like a horse next to the controller on the floor. Insects and blood was coming out of the sliver that separated the hoof. I thought to myself, how strange, and I slowly glanced up and this demonic figure was staring back at me. It leaned down towards me, its face got down in my face and grinned the most evil smile I'd ever seen. The eyes were black, its face was red, it was a one-winged creature, and blood was dripping from its teeth. It was so surreal that I immediately went into a panic attack and blacked out. I learned later that it was the fight-or-flight response that I was having, and several seconds later I came to, laying on the floor, and I could barely move. The demonic figure in the chair was laughing at me. It was as if my fear and energy had been sucked dry from me, and I lost all strength. I did all I could to crawl to my mom's room and woke her up. After I woke her up, we talked, and she believed me. She told me that she too had seen the same thing earlier that week, but didn't want to scare me. I don't know what to make of it, and still think of it to this day. I have no doubt demons and angels are real, and believe me, the last thing you ever want to encounter is a demon smiling right in your face. I don't care if you believe me or not, but when two people see the same thing on separate occasions, either we're both crazy, or something is and was wrong with that old farmhouse. My mom has thankfully moved since, and we haven't encountered that thing again. See, that would be even scarier. You pass out from fear and then you wake up just for it to still... If we can be there. What the fuck? Go away. You already spooked me. Pradeep reveal? Oh, yeah. Pradeep is... You know... We could post him on social media tomorrow. How about that? We'll post a picture of my cat. 
Have you guys ever seen a picture of a cat on the internet? I don't think anyone's ever done that before. What if that was actually illegal? What if that was the one thing Joe Biden promised and followed through with on his campaign? I prom I promise to make all the pictures of the cat the kitty cats illegal. You should, be, you should be posting that stuff on. You should be, to go online, bozo. What the hell are you doing? And then I'd be the first one to break that rule, sir. I'm sorry, sir. I salute you. And all the people across the world who love Chalky Chalky Chip. But I have to break this one rule. And I get shot in the head. I get hung at Times Square for posting a picture of my kitty. <laughs> he's, he's, just like, he's falling upstairs, just like like doing like a Mario Mario sixty four speed run, like upstairs. <laughs> uh. Honestly. If we ever get like a, a like a more normal president ever again, it's gonna be kind of weird. You know what I mean? Because you get so used to like, for the past little while, like each of the presidents kind of being like a pretty comedic demonstration of a person, and uh, it will be kind of unfun when they're not as memeable. You know. The characters. Oh yeah, there's a show on Netflix, I think, with Tim Robinson called The Characters. And I really want to watch that. Check their houses for noxious gases. What happened? That's how somebody dies in that uh, Tokyo Sinks 2020 show. Oh, from, oh, that, oh, the previous story, they were hallucinating, okay. Super Mario Big Speed Run Tech. What the hell? Let's go. This story took place when I was a kid. My dad had been a pool man for many years. One of his oldest customers decided to purchase a ranch. I don't exactly remember where, and he asked my dad if he could come and fix their pool, which was disastrously maintained before he bought it. He gave my dad permission to bring us along and told us that we were welcome to stay a few days to enjoy the ranch. We drove there and I had been in charge of reaching the... Fucking shite. You're jealous? What are you jealous of? No need to be jealous. <sighs> my husband does, but oh, thank you. Positive, good to see you. Identical twin sister got married today and I couldn't attend because I didn't renew my passport. Ah, oh, shit, that's, I'm sorry about that. We drove there and I had been in charge of reading the map quest instructions because I never seemed to be able to sleep during car trips. We drove back home a few days later after my dad was finally able to save the pool. The drive home was very long. And for long stretches, the view was mostly desert, farms, and the occasional small suburban town. Unlike me, my mom and brothers knocked out almost immediately, so most of the trip is just my dad and I talking or listening to music. I'm also a very avid reader, so I had, I had book. I had book on my lap. I need a new job, you burn out. I'm sorry. Yeah, why use many word when few word do trick? I saw like a meme pop up and it was like, you know, I want to say Gen Z, but I think we've moved on to like Gen Alpha, like making uh, making memes now and trying to be edgy or funny and shit, which is fine. I love all forms of humor from any generation. 
but they were like trying very hard to find like the least funniest clip from the office and then like make like some sort of meta ironic joke saying that oh the office is so funny and then show that clip to demonstrate in fact they don't find it funny and it was still a funny clip though I don't remember exactly what it was but uh <laughs> I guess that makes sense, yeah, when everything you watch is skibbity toilet. But I feel like, I don't know, I feel like The Office is still kind of like skibbity toilet humor sometimes, too. I don't know. I understand why some people might find The Office boring. But I, I don't really, I've never really come across anybody who, like, has legitimate frustrations with it. You got legitimate shock when I switch voices. Good, good. I'm glad. They like chaotic humor. And, you know, chaotic humor is good. I think we all enjoy that. I mean, we all watched crazy, zany cartoons growing up and that kind of thing. And shows like Seinfeld or whatever the fuck. I don't know. Just different adult shit just was not as interesting. Not to say that The Office is some, like, mature show. But, you know, your humor starts to have variations to it as you get a little bit older or whatever. And I still honestly enjoy old school and current school, <laughs> you know, fucking skibbity toilet bullshit. I think it's funny. I think it's silly goose and necessary. Married with children. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was at the barber today and was, like, talking. I was like, you, you know, they had the Fresh Prince on TV. And I was saying, you know, The Fresh Prince is like one of the last shows within the sitcom live studio audience vibe that I really ever enjoyed. But I guess, yeah, I forgot about Married with Children. That was pretty good. And then they said Roseanne. I don't particularly remember enjoying Roseanne. Yeah, I didn't really enjoy Frasier either. Definitely didn't enjoy um, Two and a Half Men or... Big Bang Theory. That shit made me want to... You know what? I knew someone who didn't like The Office because it was too cringy for them. Which is fair. It's understandable. I I know that it's not always going to... But I think a lot of The Office humor comes from your relationships with the characters. So it requires like you to watch like a solid season or two. Preferably season one and two so you can kind of like see the stark contrast between season one and two and the changes that they made and then it, and then it really just comes down to almost like your brain is like pre-programmed to start like giggling at Dwight before he even says anything you know um, and maybe I could see if somebody watched if they're used to like more out of context humor where it better get you know gotta get your attention within seven seconds quick you know, the office might not be able to accomplish that, per se. Humor isn't supposed to be to the generation. I find a large pool of comedians from different times funny. Same with how I feel about music. Yeah, exactly. Like it's very... The art of it is very timeless. And I think, it's, I think that's the greatest part about music and humor is that there can be somebody like Louis C.K. or Shane Gillis or, you know, Kevin Hart who are making, like, fucking millions with their very heavily marketable comedy um, and, and all of their endeavors but then there can be some random you know dildo online who knows how to use Photoshop or uh, Adobe After Effects or something and can make something that just makes you shit your pants laughing and send to all your friends you know for a solid minute <laughs> and same with music you know uh, you can, people can go still be going to like Bruce Springsteen concerts and enjoying their time, but there can also be somebody that like like we had somebody come into chat or a few people actually come into chat, and then they show the music that they've made, you know, by clicking on the profile or whatever, and it's f fucking great. It's like just as good of vibes as you could get from like an Avicii concert or whatever. Friends wasn't remotely realistic and every single line was a laugh. Yeah, you know, I didn't really connect very well with Friends, unfortunately. 
but I guess I also didn't really give it a fair shake because I would watch it when I was a little kid and all I wanted to see was fucking Hey Arnold and Rocco's Modern Life and shit. Family Guy is more... It's not my favorite American Dad is better. That is funny, yeah. Like, whenever Family Guy first came out and, like, all the way up to, like, season eight, I would say that I was, like, hardcore... Like, we even had a running joke with our friends that, like, Family Guy, if you were a writer within that sort of myriad of shows from Seth MacFarlane, the top writers went and wrote for Family Guy, and then it went to American Dad, and then to Cleveland Show. But then as we went and back and watched, like, more American Dad episodes years later, I was like, what the fuck? This show's so fucking funny, you know what I mean? There's a lot of good stuff. Yeah, you take out the laugh track and it becomes uncomfortable. I remember seeing, like, some shows on Netflix, too. It was, like, something to do with marijuana. And it was, like, they had a sitcom, but it was on Netflix. So they could, like, say swear words and be a little bit more unruly. And there was something so, like, oddly... Like, my brain had become so conditioned to, like, sitcom stage shows not really saying anything beyond, like, PG humor. So, like, seeing someone say, like the F word for some reason on stage just felt really odd. I'm also an avid reader, so I had a book on my lap beside the maps. Get a shout out. What's up, Luke? How you doing, dude? I'm also a very avid reader, so I had a book on my lap beside the maps. I remember the ride had been quiet for a while because I had been reading. I had to stop because it was getting dark and my dad only let me turn on the dome lights to read the maps. No radio service and the Game Boy's batteries had all died. All I had left to do was look outside. All of a sudden, I spotted a very tall shadow on a roof. I realized that there was a man who seemed to be wearing a hat, bowler or top hat, dancing and jumping from roof to roof of the suburban lot. Kind of like the scene in Singing in the Rain, which at that point I hadn't seen. It took a second to realize that it wasn't a normal thing to see. The houses were separated in a way where normal people couldn't have, couldn't have, couldn't have, couldn't have, it couldn't have. Oh yeah, that 70s show was good. Oh yeah, that 70s show. But I guess that came out at a later time when I was a little bit older and could like appreciate it more so. I guess there were good sitcoms, honestly. I just didn't give them a fair shake and bake. The ha fuck. The houses were separated in a way where a normal person couldn't have jumped roof to roof. What scared me the most is how at the last house before a field, he seemed to turn around and sense me. He bowed and tipped his hat. Even though I couldn't see it, I could sense it smiling. All I felt was dread. I turned to face my dad to see if he saw him, but... He had been paying attention to the road. When I turned back, I couldn't see the houses anymore as they were way behind us. I never saw a face or any details. He was just a silhouette on the roofs. Is it roofs or roofs? Oh yeah, yeah, Curb Your Enthusiasm was great, but I guess I wouldn't really consider that like stage sitcom per se, and it had a lot more leniency to how it approached its comedy. I think my favorite, well, I don't know, I've seen a lot of, like, stuff on Curb Your Enthusiasm, but I just remember, like, the one thing that I wanted to send Robin was, he had, like, on Curb Your Enthusiasm, I think in the newer seasons, he had, like, a caddy who was, like, Norwegian, and he thought that he was Swedish, 
and the guy like got real offended that he thought he was like Swedish and he's like he's like what what's the difference and he's like oh I don't know um, food culture language like started going this long list of stuff just like so pissed off and yeah I sent that to Rob and he was like yeah fuck the Swedes <laughs> because I guess the Norwegians are not a fan of one another David De La Rosa Jr. with the one thank you I never saw a face or any details. He was just a silhouette on the roofs. It's, it's roofs, right? Or roofs. A ho hooves on the roofs. No, that's not correct. It's just roofs. Hold on a second. Affordable roofs and Romano. Oh, why did I think there was like a V? I never saw a face or any details. He was just a silhouette on the roofs. I remember the feeling. Fuck. <laughs> Rufio. Is it Mooses or Mises? I remember, God damn it, Pradeep distracted me, he's like knocking shit around. I remember feeling afraid that it was following us, that if it could, wait, what the fuck, what is this grammar? I remember the feeling afraid it would follow us, that it could if, okay. I remember feeling afraid that it would follow us, that it could if it wanted to. I never saw something like that on our many road trips ever again, and sometimes I wonder if I imagined it, but it felt so real. The memory is so vivid as well, which always comes back when I'm watching old musicals because the dancing reminds me of the way it moved. What's up, Shadowbud? How you doing? Goose or Goose? Geeses. Geeses, sheesh. Oh. oh, man. The only bad thing is, is like sleeping at night, and I don't know how you guys feel, but sleeping at night is like way creepier than sleeping during the daytime. Obviously, you're probably a lot healthier sleeping at night, but there's just something so fucking terrible of waking up in the middle of the night anymore. You just lay there and you're like, fuck. I bought a painting at a thrift store of a beautiful young angel a few months ago. I was immediately drawn to it, which is not typical for me. I'm not into art or angels, and I hung it up in my bedroom the same day I bought it. The next morning when I woke up, the living room lights were on. I thought that was strange that I would have not noticed that I'd left them on when I went to bed since I can see my living room from my bedroom and would notice if the lights were on. The next night, I made sure that they were off when I went to bed, and sure enough, the next morning they were on again. Same thing happened the next night. This time I woke up at around 3am and could see from my bed the living room lights were on again. After that third night I had never had an issue again so I chalked it up to some type of electrical thing and it being a coincidence with the painting, although the lights never turned on automatically during the day, just while I slept. Then just the other day I was in my bedroom putting laundry away and the painting started swinging, like it was very, very noticeable. I just sort of stared at it, watching it, and then it just stopped. That's never happened before. 
nothing could have hit it, and there were no breezes or drafts. It was... Fuck. I kind of burped there. Stop it, Stu. I kind of burped. Like talking to the sound design guy. Hey, Stu, cut it there. It did a burp. I wonder how it would be if you're in like a studio with someone who's recording you. Like, if you would have to stop the recording, or if it just records all the way through and they just edit it. I live in Vegas, so sleeping days are better. Nights are creepy sleeping here. In Vegas, really? I figured like Vegas you would feel like surrounded by people, so it would be like maybe a little bit less creepy. Nothing could have hit it. There were no breezes or drafts. It was really, really swinging. And I'm not sure what to think. I don't get a bad feeling from it. And I should mention that I lived by myself so no one could have turned the lights on after I went to bed. Or That sounded weird. I'm not sure what to think. I don't get a bad feeling from it. And I should mention that I live by myself, so no one could have turned the lights on after I went to bed or moved the painting. Let's take a peek at this painting. Oh. Interesting. Huh. It is a bit strange, I guess. It like looks like it's kind of like amateurly... Not amateurly uh, painted, but it looks like it's not some ancient piece of history. And like the, the bird in it is kind of like tilted to the side, but like the eye is in like a weird spot, like in the center of its like s face, but like as its head's in a profile that almost looks like the eye is in the center of like a normal thing's face. So that looks a little bit strange hmm <sighs> you took rohypnol and it was the best sleep interesting For nightclub scenes, they have it totally quiet except for the script and all the people you see talking aren't making sounds and they add music in their sounds later. Wait, for what are we talking about? You have a paranormal story from when you were 14 in the domin dominant? What's that? Definitely send it in if you'd like. Did you know that when you step on a sidewalk crack, you get pregnant? I have heard that. Is it stormy? It was stormy, but it chilled out. It seemed like the storm passed pretty quick. Oh, in the Dominican Republic. Okay, nice. I'm tired, dude. Having not done, like, a circuit workout like that in quite some time, like, man, I am fucking beat. My meat is beat. Hmm. Do I drink coffee? I do. Not at night, though, because then I'll just be up. I need some help identifying whatever the hell is here with me. I just got back from a week-long vacation last night, and the same activity from the house that I was staying in is going on at my apartment. I apologize in advance for any co- I apologize in advance for any incoherence in what I say because I haven't gotten much sleep the last week. 
The house we stayed in was gorgeous, and since my entire extended family was staying there, 18 people, it was also absolutely massive. It was split into two parts. The old side of the house, roughly just a basement studio and three bedrooms upstairs, and the newer side. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the newer side as no paranormal activity took place there, but it was a gorgeous house. I shared a room with my girlfriend, and since we were the last to arrive, we got the worst room in the house. Not only did we get the smallest room in the house, it was about 10 feet by 10 feet, it was also on the old side of the house, directly in front of the basement stairs. As I had been driving for 6 hours that day, I was pretty tired, so I said hello to everyone and quickly got into bed to go to sleep. It was around 11pm when my girlfriend and I got into bed. She's lucky in the sense that she can fall asleep just about anywhere in five minutes, so she was out within seconds. I had a weird uneasy feeling in my chest. Not necessarily a scary feeling, just that annoying alert feeling you get when you feel like something is watching you. And to help ease myself, I hop right down into a YouTube rabbit hole. About an hour into my journey, I could tell that my girlfriend was having a nightmare, so I put my hand on her arm to gently wake her up. But as soon as I touched her, she bolted awake screaming, mumbled something like the ghost, and immediately went back to sleep. I had just started to get tired, and safe to say I was sufficiently creeped out at this point, so back down the rabbit hole I went. About two hours went by when my girlfriend woke up screaming again, saying, the footsteps are close, and then passed out immediately again. I decided I'm not going to sleep that night and went right back to YouTube. Another hour passes and I see my girlfriend sit up in bed, but she was still asleep. She moved, so she was sitting on the edge of the bed and started having a conversation with the corner of the room. She eventually laid back down, but not before I was absolutely terrified. Activity died down after the first night, usually just creaks in the floor and knocks on the wall and door. The only other standout event besides movement around the room happened on the second to last night when something sat down on the edge of my bed. My first thought was that my cat had jumped up on the bed, but I remember I wasn't at my apartment and sat up just in time to see the indentation lift up off the edge of the bed. It couldn't have been my girlfriend as she was on the opposite side of the bed and nowhere near where the indentation happened. Also, the bed I was staying in was as firm as a rock, so it was challenging to push that far down into it. Fast forward one more sleepless night, and I'm on my way home. After a long day of driving, I got back and settled down with some Netflix. My girlfriend had plans to go hang out with her friends, so she was out most of the night. I thought I'd finally get a break from the spooky stuff when my dog and cat both start tracking something around my apartment. The way their heads were moving, whatever they saw was moving fast. Now I've seen them track bugs before, but neither of them really focus on it too much. They usually just huff and ignore it, but this was different. Poppy, my dog, started growling when whatever it was moved into the corner of the room. My cat Anna jumped up right next to me on the couch while Poppy growled at the corner and started to slowly back up towards me. After a full week of crap like this, I wasn't even scared anymore, just angry and tired because it's like it, it likes to, oh, because it likes. Seven Leaf Clover, thank you for the five Canadians, says, gotta go, have a great night, Joel Perdeep and Buttersocks of Cult Family, remember to be kind to yourself and take good care, much love, thank you, Seven Leaf, good to see you, appreciate you. <sighs> You died twice on the operating table since then I've had paranormal follow me. Interesting. What kind of paranormal? Do you want to play Rainbow Six? You know, I never really played Rainbow Six that much. I played a little bit with my friends in the past, but I know some people are very heavily addicted to that game, probably more so than I am to Snowversnatch. Um, but yeah, I don't really feel... 
I remember there was one frustrating thing about that game where it was like peekers always had an advantage because it was like their what they saw on their screen tended to get to them before the person who was camping, you know, on defense. And I thought that was a little stupid that they like most people, even though the game seems to have a pretty strong base to it, it seemed like most people just kind of uh are confided to the idea that the servers are just crap and that's all there is to it. Spirits, Joel, which, what kind of spirits, Don, what kind of experiences have you had? After a full week of crap like this, I wasn't even scared anymore. Just angry and tired because it likes to keep me from falling asleep. Poppy and Anna both track the thing moving out of the corner towards us, so she starts barking like crazy. After I got her to stop barking, I heard a growl come from the center of the room. It was pretty high-pitched, like a small dog or a girl. Judging by where my pets were tracking, it looked like it was very short, very fast, and could jump up on the table and counters. I stood up, stared in its general direction, and said, Please leave. I got a huge wave of chills and got goosebumps in places I didn't know I could get goosebumps, but I said it again much louder and more stern this time while opening my front door to let it out. Whatever it was got really upset, it seemed. It didn't do anything, but I could feel a lot of anger. My pets tracked it moving towards the door, so I thought that I was in the clear. About two minutes later, my dog starts barking at the corners of the room where the, the door is while my cat is on full alert staring at the same place. At this point, I just give up and hope it just leaves me alone since it hadn't been violent yet, just annoying. Poppy eventually fell asleep. Oh my god, I just had a great idea, guys. Um, okay, if cats and dogs... If cats and dogs can see spirits, right? Do you think if we took their, not that we can, you know, we wouldn't do anything inhumane, but I'm just saying like, what if we took their eyeballs after they passed away and like whatever, like there's got to be a way, dude, there's got to be a way to use cats and dogs Dude, some, some weird military researchers had to have done this at some point. Using cats and dogs and, like, determining what specifically... Shell, you're involved in this. You're, you're a lead scientist. Um, using cats and dogs to, like... I don't know. Could you monitor their brain waves? Could you monitor... I'm just trying to think what it is specifically within the cats and dogs. Yeah. Some sort of neural transmitter. I'm just making up words at this point. But you think that you could that with through through occult science, modern occult science would be able to like figure this shit out. Have to use Pradeep's body. Dude, he could do it. He could be Lee. He could put on a little science coat. That's in Naruto Naruto? Did see they were on to something. Oh, oh. I have my son visit me in my dreams. That's cool. Does he say good things? Like, is he in like a good place? Poppy eventually fell asleep at my feet, and Anna had run into the other room, occasionally poking her head out the door to look in and immediately spring back into the room. I just gave up dealing with it at this point. I put my earbuds in to block out the knocks on the walls and watch some YouTube. I decided to stay up until my girlfriend got back to let her know what was happening, but whatever it was took this as an opportunity to mess with me. I was laying on my couch and kept feeling something poking me every five minutes. 
not hard, just constant pokes of my arms and legs and feet. And after this went on for a while, it pulled up on my nostrils. Again, I just ignored it because I learned it just gets worse if I engage with it. Whenever something like this would happen, I could feel the apartment get much colder, despite my thermostat saying that it was 72 degrees. After hours of knocking, poking, pulling, and the occasional arm brush, my girlfriend finally got home. The second she got through the door, I could tell whatever it was left, as I had no uneasy feeling that there were no more weird noise. Fuck. Fucking shite. Oh, 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 shit. I absolutely love this channel. You're so good at what you do. Oh, thank you, Natalie. Appreciate you. Your dog, Def, saw something in the corner of the room. It was summer and hot. She kept growling, and when I walked over to the area, it was freezing cold. Scared the poop out of me. I listen to your podcast every night. Thanks, OBs. Thanks for, thanks for listening. had message from him through a spiritualist church was comforting oh wait yeah did you type I forget if you type something pertaining to if when he visits your dreams uh... oh do 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 You ordered a Renegan. What's a Renegan? The second she got through the door, I could tell whatever it was left, as I had no uneasy feeling, and there were no more weird noises, so I had one of the most restful nights I've had in over a week. I don't know if it's gone for good or if it'll come back tonight, but I will post an update tomorrow if anything happens. Any help on this would be greatly appreciated as I don't know how to handle it. Other than the growl and the short but overwhelming sense of anger, it hasn't been violent or disturbing, just really annoying. Any all help... <laughs> Any help... Uh, ghost Kevin, edit. It's only been a couple of hours since the post, but activity has been a little hot. Oh, okay. Alondra, what's going on? Let my voiceovers for Dark Ace Animation. Dark Ace Animation. Who are they? Huh. Oh, there I am. <laughs> right in the first fucking story. I don't even remember this person... Who do they use? Scared, stiff, spooky, vibes, let's read podcasts, whispered diaries, booze and booze. Interesting. I hate whatever program they use for animation, bro. Like, it always feels like the same fucking dog shit. Hmm. Well, sometimes you want the whole gang to eat. A little odd, but it is what it is. And I guess if it brought you over here, I guess that's a good thing, too. Oh, that's how you found me, too, OBs? Interesting. <laughs> Are you the same person, actually? Fuck. <laughs> Your is so good. All your graphics are cool too. Thanks, Sydney. Good to see you. <laughs> Tailmaster. I don't think I've heard of them. Any help on how to identify or safely communicate with it would be greatly appreciated. Edit. It has only been a couple of hours since I posted this, but activity has been a little higher since. 
For starters, I am running a fever out of the blue. My temp was at 98.8 this morning. I checked because I had a fever the previous night, and it had risen up to 101.3 in only 15 minutes. On top of this, the knocking and rustling noises around the apartment have started up again. I feel absolutely drained. It's even hard to keep my eyes open despite a good night's rest yesterday. The main point of this post is for advice and help on how to deal with this thing. Update 2. Thank you to everyone worried about my physical health. I went to the doctors and I'm COVID free. It turns out a previous sinus infection I thought I got. Fuck, we have to make sure that this... Like there's been a new activity to my girlfriend and I but it consistently but normally I wouldn't that day's beach trip. She would have make sure to update it. Oh. Alright, maybe we start. Maybe we go back to the other one. Cause I almost feel like talking about the fever makes it seem like the fever might be causing hallucinations. Do I have Patreon? I do, yeah. On Patreon, it's a dollar a month for early access to all the audio. And there's also a $5 tier for bonus content that... You see the people with green names here, they get access to bonus content as well on YouTube. There's a little playlist. Other than the growl and the short but overwhelming sense of anger, it hasn't been violent or disturbing, just really annoying. Any help on how to identify or safely communicate with it would be greatly appreciated. So it's Joel, yeah. You burr. Damn, dude. I might avoid just doing any sort of high intensity interval bullshit going forward because I am fucking zooted, bro. I was with my girlfriend preparing dinner. The year was 2015 and everything seemed normal. I put on some music and the speakers were in my room. While we were cooking, I noticed that the music was no longer being listened to. I was surprised that something happened with the internet because it was Spotify. I went to the bedroom and I noticed that the playlist continued but the volume knob had been set to zero. I didn't pay much attention to it at that moment. I set the knob again and went to the kitchen to continue with dinner, and not even two minutes passed when, again, I noticed that no music was being heard. This time it seemed something strange to me. This time it seemed really strange to me. I lived alone and we were just my girlfriend and I, and I went into my room and this time the knob was on one so I could lightly hear some music. I was surprised because it was a physical and not digital fault with what was going on. Again, I turned the knob and returned to the kitchen. I tried not to think about that and concentrate on cooking when suddenly I clearly heard things. Haven't seen anything paranormal when you worked at the hospital. You know, I tried. Um, and I did see people pass away and stuff, but... I don't know, I feel... I guess... Protected from that kind of stuff. Like, if any witches were ever to try to put anything on me, it would be... Kind of like a reversal, and they might catch on fire. So... I advise against it. Hootie, welcome back for 28 months. I appreciate you. Thanks for being you. You're welcome, Hootie. Thank you for 28 months. How long is that? That's 24. Oh, okay. I can't do math, dude. 
Quick maps. Oh, you got was vomited on. Nice. <sighs> Again, I turn the knob and return to the kitchen. I try not to think about that and concentrated on cooking when suddenly I clearly hear things on the floor, this time in the studio that was next to my room. It bothered me, the idea of passing by these things instead of enjoying a pleasant evening with my girlfriend. I asked her if she had heard that sound and she said no. I replied that it was clearly a noise from the studio so she told me let's take a look. In effect there were things on the floor. I wanted to think that it had simply fallen, and we picked them up, turned off the lights and left, and we were in the kitchen again when we heard another noise. This time, she could also appreciate that. And I told her something was happening, and she, being a very religious person, told me not to worry, and we went to the studio, and this time, the light was on, and there was again some things being thrown around. There were no open windows or wind currents, and it seemed very strange to us. We lifted everything and before I was leaving I pronounced out loud that I would leave the light on and we retired to bed, kind of nervous. We had not reached the kitchen- wait, retire, dude this is like strange English, it's like random words. Oh, Ecuador, okay nice. Did you ever see any nurses doing dope at work? Uh, I never saw anybody do any dope, um, but there were nurses that I knew of who got in trouble for basically stealing various forms of, like, morphine and Dilaudid and shit like that, you know? Which is sad, because it's just, like... Well, it's actually kind of odd. I think the one guy, like, he got away with it for, like, a solid two years, you know? Just being addicted to fucking... Like, can you imagine that? Like, the place that you need to go get your fix or whatever to, like, avoid going through withdrawals is literally your workplace, you know? So it's like every every time you go in, you gotta be, like, fucking sneaky about it and stuff. I don't know. He seemed fine with getting fired, though, which was kind of weird. <laughs> I guess at that point he just stopped giving a flooping shit. Oh, yeah, and there was this one nurse who was, like, the sweetest woman ever. Had so many kids. Was, like, the sweetest woman ever. Just, like, you know, she was one of the few nurses that I, like, loved giving report to because she just did not give a shit about... I mean, she gave, she gave a shit, but she was just, like, so nice, you know what I mean? It wasn't... Because some nurses will, like, pull teeth to get every little nitpick information about the patient that otherwise means nothing. But she was always chill and very kind, and then I come to find out that she was, like, very heavily addicted to, like, prescription pain medicine. <laughs> I was like, maybe that's why she was so cool. Um... But yeah, I hope she's doing alright. She was... I don't know. Just caught me off guard. Okay, I'm gonna put this one through chat BBC just to fix the fucking grammar. Um... Chat GDPT has been moving so slow lately, dude. <sighs> there were no open windows or wind currents. It seemed very strange to us. We searched everything, and before leaving, I pronounced aloud that I would leave the light on, and we left, kind of nervous. We would not reached the kitchen when noises were heard again. This time, I was really afraid that it was a thief who had entered the house. 
We ran to the study and the lights were off and a TV that was in there was on. Oh, Jesus. We ran to the study and the lights were off and a TV that was there was on with static. We looked at each other and I told her that that was not normal and that something was happening and we should probably do something. She proposed that we pray and we went to the kitchen and she took my hands and we said two prayers that she knew. When we were finished, something was heard again and I wanted to go see but I was shocked to see that just outside the kitchen there was an inflatable toy that I used to have to punch for fun in the studio. Dude, what the fuck? The grammar got fucking worse. Chat BBC my ass. What about the male nurse that killed off his patients in the hospital? Who's that? I didn't work with him. You might be thinking of uh, the Angel of Death guy or something. I think he was in Florida. And I think he was like a CNA or something. I don't know. When we finished, something was heard again. I wanted to go see, but I was shocked to see that just outside the kitchen, there was an inflatable toy that I used to have to punch for fun in the studio. It was horrible, I had no idea how it had even got there, and at that moment I felt very scared. I didn't know if it was something paranormal or... Oh my god. I didn't know if it was something paranormal or if a person entered the house and was playing the worst joke ever on us. My girlfriend asked me what was wrong with me, why I stood at the door, and I told her not to leave the kitchen, that I didn't want to see... Dude, what the fuck, dude? I told her not to leave the kitchen, that I did not want her to see that, but she leaned out and screamed. Okay. God, I don't know why, it just seems like it's even more confusing now. Oh yeah, wait, was he was he a nurse or wasn't wasn't he like the respiratory therapist or some shit like that? Gaming with Alice, thank you, good to see you. My girlfriend asked me what was wrong with me, why I stood at the door, and I told her not to leave the kitchen that I didn't want her to see that, but she leaned out and screamed. I tried to calm her down. Nothing had ever happened in that house. We were very scared, and at that moment, the bell rang. I answered on the intercom, and nothing. Every time, I was more nervous, but I tried to stay calm. I walked towards her, and the bell rang again. I answered, and nothing. I told her, let's get out of here. Something or someone is bothering us. It occurred to me to go to the house of a cousin who lived nearby, and then the lights started to blink. It was terribly terrifying. Getting to the street was a great relief, and by the way, it was completely desolate outside. We walked a few blocks until we reached my cousin's house. We told her everything while our hands were still shaken, and she believed us, and she had some holy water, and that we had to go back because what had happened to us was not normal. When we came back with the holy water, loud music could be heard from the street. We opened the door with fear and immediately my cousin began to sprinkle holy water all over the place. The inflatable toy was in another location. It seemed that it had moved a few meters from where we last saw it. The knob of the speakers was at maximum and all the lights in the house were on. It seemed that they had had a small party without us, and it was horrible. Note on the Spotify browser was written reggaeton, and the first playlist was playing. And I hate reggaeton music. I never put that kind of music on before. I don't even know how it's spelled, but it was written the same way that I used to know. 
and that was very shocking to me. I was never skeptical of the paranormal. Wait, what? I was never super skeptical of the paranormal, but I didn't believe everything I heard until that night. And for good luck, I can say that after using the holy water, nothing else happened in that house. I no longer live there. I threw the toy away, and the girlfriend is now my wife, and we know that all that was real. These spirits or entities do exist, and we must be careful and have faith in God and not let them disturb us. He said it was mercy killings, but had done it at previous hospitals. Yeah, I mean... Scary shit. Pup her, pup her pish. Happy chemtrails. Are you chemtrailing us right now? What is the theory behind... That's one of those conspiracies that I never quite understood. Like the, the concept behind the, the chemtrail. Like what's it supposed to even do? Or like what's the purpose of it? Oh wait, they, everybody's got... <laughs> Okay, the inflatable toy is like a inflatable pirate. That's funny. To control us somehow. Boomers think it's real. Chemtrails are good, basically poisoning the environment, food supply, raining nanotech, and more... G what is that? Morgulons? Little aliens? Morgulons on us? More gallons. Chemtrail controlling the weather. That's what I heard before, but I wasn't sure like the specifics on what it what is it doing to control said weather. Terry, welcome back for twenty three months is boo. I ordered some menthol crystals online. We'll let you know if they actually work to clear the sign. Oh, okay. I thought you order it because they made menthol cigarettes illegal or something. Eventually block out the sun. Yeah, but wouldn't it be like a cute like a an accumulation of stuff? Chemtrails help change condensation levels in the sky. Saudi Arabia has been doing this and they made too much rain causing flooding. Okay. Chemtrails don't have a purpose. They they're condensation when the moisture levels are just right in the atmosphere. Oh, just from the planes or whatever. And specific to the atmospheric things. Well, if that is the case, like, it's certainly not pretty, you know what I mean? Whenever, it, if, if, if it is coming out of those planes and you can kind of see it and it sort of like dissipates throughout the sky, it's kind of an eyesore, you know what I mean? When you got like a really nice clear day and then it just like creates this like crosshatch in the sky that, you know could be considered like exhaust from planes but it's like disgusting to look at because like it's I don't know it just looks terrible I think they could do it a little bit more not so visual Hawk X with the one thank you Hawk X good to see you it's called upper aerosol injection it's to block out the rays of the sun with metal particles if you look it up but what's the point of that? Why would because like wouldn't the metal particles just get in, like flow down or get into the water or the soil and shit? Dropping heavy metals or chemicals to ist purpose. Chemicals aren't the rain seeds or whatever that China. Hmm. I don't know. I feel like it would have to. I don't know. That'd be a very. I mean, how do they, how would they, what do they, what's the plan? It's weather, it's, they want to kill us, they want to population control. I feel like if it's so many things and it's, but I just, how do you keep track of it all? How do you even know what's, what's legitimate? I've never even seen anybody even like do like an actual crack at trying to 
understand it. They're trying to make us more fertile? Jesus, dude. I'm gonna have a baby soon. Actually, did you hear that Ozempic, even though it's terrible for you and like fucks up your gut and your serotonin in your gut, um, apparently people who take Ozempic, it kind of negates their like birth control and like makes them like more fertile. And there was like a 57 year old woman who got pregnant recently. <laughs> um, because she was taking Ozempic. Kind of crazy. Like Kodak Black said, they got weather control. <laughs> I love Kodak Black. He's so funny, dude. I don't know. I mean, yeah, don't don't just stay away from Ozempic because of the fucking uh, fertility thing. Stay away from it because from what I've heard is that it's like it essentially like deactivates your stomach's ability to like absorb things as well. And but there's like people have reported a massive increase in like depressive symptoms because it also fucks up your serotonin. That's, you know, your serotonin like receptors within the gut. And uh you know, I think there's, like, a pretty important connection between, like, your gut biome and your serotonin connecting to your brain. Because I've also heard, like, certain bacteria, like, yeast and stuff that gets in your stomach will, like, make you, will connect to your serotonin receptors and, like, trick your brain into thinking that you want sugar, you know, to feed it. Which, isn't that crazy? That our bodies are, like, essentially infected with certain bacteria that... I don't know. It just makes me feel like such a useless physical piece of meat. Could Ozempic make a man pregnant? Probably, if you put it in their poop hole. Your grandma had your youngest uncle at 50 in the 70s. Interesting. That's crazy. Another issue with Ozempic is that because it supercharges your body's energy burning ability, it starts taking away a large mass of your muscle as well. Interesting. So I imagine you would have to like really stay on top of your like strength training just to like maintain that muscle. I guess I don't really know a lot about Ozempic to be honest with you to be talking about it, but I would just be very careful with anything that any sort of miracle cure that like pharmaceutical companies come out with try to sell you it's like they're the same ones that gave us all sorts of other shit such as fentanyl <laughs> so this happened a little bit ago I was 17 at the time it was summer so we were heading to my uncle's house he owns a little house near a beach and getting to his house we have to go past this big stretch of forest that spans on and on for about an hour or so. The sun was just covering everything in some nice light after it rose, and then it got weird. I remember that my dad turned off his music to pull up the GPS, and I looked at the forest watching all the trees speed by. Then I also took notice that we were the only cars on the road. The only car. None behind, none in front. Hell, I didn't see another car for like an hour and a half while driving here besides pulling out of my driveway and getting on the road. I thought it was really weird, especially since I'm in a pretty populated area. It's Oregon, after all, in the middle of summer. I kept looking at the forest, and I kid you not, a clearing opened for a few seconds, and I saw two men wearing black suits and black sunglasses, with black gloves and shoes as well tying some big hairy creature to a tree. I just kept looking at them and they were looking at me, not the car, me directly, like they knew that I saw them. It scared the crap out of me and I asked my dad if he saw them and he seemed confused and then said that he didn't see a thing. He was too busy driving and looking at his GPS. 
I don't really believe in strange things like this, but I can't explain what I saw, and I don't know how to feel. Thinking about it now, I just get uneasy and scared. The creature looked like it was chained up, and wasn't lashing around or anything or freaking out, and to make it worse, as soon as we left that forest, we started to join back in with other cars. It was like I stepped into some sort of crime scene. Has anyone else ever had an experience like this, or can I chalk it up to just my hyper imagination? <laughs> they were chaining up Bigfoot. Every time they find one, they chain him back up. Um, that kind of reminds me of the story we read earlier. Which one was that again? No. Counter with a Damon. Uh, the Dancing Man, yeah. Is that okay? Lavishness 0418. I think I saw it. No, different user. Okay, I was thinking if it was the same user, then they were just using a similar concept. Hmm. <laughs> You're going to use a condom with your flashlight be just to be safe, yeah. You never know. Can I tell your toddler to go to sleep? Say, Michaela, it's time for bed. It's time for sweepies. The Gnote, greatest narrator of all time. Thank you, Axe G. It would be kind of sweet if, like, randomly some, like, superhero billionaire showed up at my door one day with their, like, uh, you know, their men in black, and they're like, Hello, sir. Our boss would like to see you. Who the hell are you guys? Um, that doesn't matter. And then they pull out a briefcase, and they open up a big, shiny tub of money. And they say, Our boss would like to send his condolences, as you're the only way for him to fall asleep at night. Come with us. And I'm like, Okay, but I gotta... F Can I bring some diet, Dr. Pepper? Do more ghost stories. I definitely will. I definitely will try to do it at least monthly for show. So I got her home and placed her on the top of my entertainment center. Per Wait, what? Who we step? So I bought. Oh, I bought a doll. I hate when the title is like part of the story. You know what I mean? How many sightings of Bigfoot back in the 70s? I think a lot of that probably stemmed from the whole, that like really famous, I don't know when that was filmed, but like that famous Bigfoot video. Maybe everybody else saw that and then they just like got on like Bigfoot fever, kind of like after Jaws came out, everybody was afraid of sharks. Jimmy Butler is hurt. Oh, I did see, yeah, I hear the NBA playoffs are going on. Who are they playing? Blake K with a five. Thank you, Blake. Appreciate you. So I bought a doll today with an attachment and just wanted to share what happened already. So I got her home and placed her on the top of my entertainment center pretty high up. Now for starters, the moment I got her in the car, I put an EMF to her with a built-in spirit box. The EMF was spiking, and after a few seconds of moving it away and moving it closer again, the spirit box said, Don't. So I stopped and apologized. I spoke to the spirit of the doll while driving, letting the spirit know that it was in good hands, now along with some just... What the flick? Oh, Ouija board stories probably would be a great one for the next topic video, you know, topic paranormal shit. The Luigi board. Oh, that'd be so funny too, if the thumbnail had like Luigi in it, playing with the Ouija board. Guys, remind me of that, don't let me forget that idea. Ouija board stories, 
Luigi playing with Ouija board thumbnail. Shakira, Shakira. Or maybe even like some action sequence where like Luigi's like sucking up ghosts with his vacuum. Or maybe like sucking off ghosts. If you're an experience with sleep paralysis, I experienced it last night, honestly. It's the most scared I've ever been. I didn't think it could feel so real. What happened in your sleep paralysis? I spoke to the spirit of the doll while driving, letting the spirit know that it was in good hands. Now along with just some other things. Oh, okay. I spoke to the spirit of the doll while driving, letting the spirit know that it was in good hands. Kind of like talking to a friend. Now once we got home, I placed her where I have before, and I decided... I oh, placed her where I have. Now once we got home, I placed her down, and I decided to leave her for a bit to get accustomed. Upon returning, I decided to do another EMF spirit box check to see if I had any better luck at this point. I'm short, so I wasn't holding it up very high. The spirit box said, higher. I raised it higher, and then the box asked, what do you want me to do? The spirit, for some reason, was making the meter of the EMF actually bottom out instead of spike, so I requested it to please make the meter go the other way, and it did. Then the box asked, Am I dead? I said yes and proceeded to ask for its name. And it said, soon. And then all the activity just stopped, almost like it was in shock of finding out that it was dead and needed time to process it. Anyways though, I just wanted to share this with you guys because it was just an incredible experience to have happen. Wait, what the fuck? I've never heard anybody... have like a spirit box work so like on point you know what I mean have you guys used spirit boxes before yeah tell the ghost you want to clap its cheeks in all capitals <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, like, the spirit box, like, apparently you can hear, like, words, it's like, it'll be like this, but, you know, like, a bunch of static, but then, like, it's, I don't know how the fuck it works, but then all of a sudden you can hear, like, through the static, like, got some stuffed crust, I'm allergic to nuts, I have a gluten allergy, and that's how I die, Freaky ghoul. Like poltergeist white noise. Yeah, essentially. But it's like, then all of a sudden you'll hear like some audible stuff and behind the white noise. And you're like, what the fuck was that? But it almost seemed like this guy had the EMF and the fucking spirit box stacked on themselves. Like some sort of Ghostbusters gadget. I don't know. If I could bang a ghost every night, you know. Oh, man. I'd probably do it. I have a ghost baby. I have to pay ghost child support. Go to ghost custody court. It's a whole pain in the ass. You have to have, like, a lawyer and a Ouija board. <laughs> I have a ghost gasm. What's up, John? It started a week ago, roughly, and has happened multiple times. First of all, I want to mention that I live alone and don't have any pets. Last week, I went to sleep at around 2 a.m., and I had my MacBook Pro closed completely on the floor. While I was in bed, I started to hear typing on the keyboards. It wasn't cracking or anything like that, it was typing. And I'm not imagining it. Imagining. Any, any words with over three syllables 
blow my mind, dude. What was recalled from people losing their minds? Where's the ghost was a dude? Yeah, we're like... He just like throws me on my stomach. Wait, wait! And rips my pants down. No! Ah! Can't even feel anything. While I was in the bed, I started to hear typing on the keyboard. It wasn't cracking or anything like that. It was typing, and I'm not imagining it at all. It lasted several minutes and then eventually stopped. I freaked out like crazy that night, but eventually managed to fall asleep. The next day, I also went to bed late, and I fell asleep and woke up in the middle of the night by the typing noise of the keyboard. It wasn't a dream, nor am I crazy. It really happened. I was very scared, so I turned on the lights and the typing stopped. My computer was still closed, shut, fuck, shit, balls, penis. Alright. Have you seen the Conjuring House videos on YouTube where Satori and Cody connect and the ghosts make tapping sounds? I don't think so. I was very scared so I turned on the lights and the typing stopped. My computer was still closed as in shut down. So I turned off the lights and ten minutes later I heard the typing on my keyboard again. This time too it lasted for a long time and I almost had a panic attack and keep in mind I live alone. It happened again other nights. Every time it happens after I go to sleep and it can be right after I got to sleep and put the MacBook down or many hours later in the early morning while I'm still sleeping. It never happens while I'm actually using the computer itself. Last night I also couldn't sleep because I heard weird noises coming from the windows, like some weird gush of wind, loud noises around my windows, and of course, again, the typing on the computer. And I'm terrified. What could this be? I was thinking I'm either spied on by some agency that managed to infiltrate my computer and search for something, but what? I have nothing to hide and I'm a completely average guy, I've never committed any crime whatsoever. And even then, if the computer is closed, how can I hear the typing? I mean, even if they infiltrated, I shouldn't hear typing on the keyboard. Or is it something paranormal? I read I'm not the first guy who has heard typing of a keyboard at night, and other people who have experienced it were equally frightened. Some of them used a mechanical keyboard which is exposed at night. What? I think that's so funny, like, just the immediate thought of, like, somebody hat, like, somebody hacks your computer, but the one thing they do whilst hacking your computer is make your keyboard <laughs> work, <laughs> like they're typing on it, like, chick, 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 chick. I heard raspy breathing right next to my ear, and I felt the weight of something getting on my bed. I live alone, no pets. Yikers. Ghosts have to do taxes too. Dude, fuck taxes, man. I just, um, I had to file for an extension, but I did get it done now. And holy fuck, dude. Fuck taxes. Fuck it. You know? It's just like, they just print out money anyways. And I feel like taxes are just there to, like, make sure that we don't get any crazy ideas. Make sure we don't go and start a bank or something, or, I don't know, start a new currency, perhaps. Or literally do anything with our lives. You want to bet money that half the ghost stories are just people who unknowingly have undiagnosed schizophrenia? Yeah, maybe. It's hard to say. <laughs> Especially this one, where he's like, thinks the government's coming. But, you know... I don't know, if it was a really weird experience, it's 
make you feel a little freaking nuts. Taxes have always been a part of life. Good, so I should just enjoy it. Just like getting getting flipped over by a succubus ghost and boinked. But it's actually the IRS using their using their chemtrails to flip me around. I know. Yeah, wasn't the income tax? Wasn't that two thousand or nineteen thirteen? Whenever the Federal Reserve was made, it's crazy. Humanity's lifelong struggles. It's just such a strange concept. I feel like half the reason we even sort of participate in it is just sort of like a collective sense of fear, you know. I don't know. I'm just going to send it all off to some foreign war. It's just going to be... Go right into, like, Lockheed Martin's fucking back pocket. Listen to me to escape macroeconomics homework. What even is college anymore? Do they even teach anything? You haven't paid taxes in years. How would you get away with that, though? Hey, Grandma, thank you for the two gifters. One, two, Aeon, or... Or you... I remember you said Eon, right? Eon, Surratt. And Shell. There you go, Shell. Boom, shakalaka. The government slippery slope. Yeah, that's true. Like, a lot of people kind of lean on the Constitution, which is sort of like something that you can use as a bit of a sh shield between you and overreach, but yeah, I imagine it doesn't take very long or really one or two crisis situations to just completely abridge the Constitution or completely negate it. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, what can you do? I think we're. I think we live in a very strange, anomalous time frame, in comparison to history, and and honestly, I feel like we should just be thankful to be living in it right now, because it's hard to say how long it's going to be around for. Are you a sicko or what? Drink. Oh yeah, I guess I haven't drank anything in a while. Thank you for reminding me. I'm a robot. I need my oil. Beep, beep, boop, boop, beep, beep. The government reach around. You can write off a super chat, by the way. Don't forget. You guys? Right, yeah. Just say your your business is donating to me. That's your whole shtick. And then posting it on social media. But you do eventually have to make a profit somehow. I mean, I really wouldn't have any problem paying taxes if it was just fucking local and state. But as soon as you get fucking federal in there, it's just like, they kill you, dude. It just, like, sucks the shit out of you. And I guess most people might not notice it because it gets taken right out of your paycheck. But, I mean, if you ever get time to, like, just sit down and look at your paycheck, look at how much of your shit is just taken... And look into, like, where it's going, you know? And then correlate to that to the fact that, like, most of the time it doesn't even seem to fucking matter because they'll just drum up some new pet project bullshit to print another trillion dollars and make, you know, your dollar even more worthless. While you go to the store and the prices jump up and blah, 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 blah. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to make you sad. It's just stupid, man. Like I And the weirdest thing is is that the money is just it's just like it's just like made up, you know? It's not even backed by anything. I mean I guess it is backed by the buying and selling of oil, but right? The whole petrol dollar thing. But isn't that like heavily propped up on uh or heavily incentivized via control of the buying and selling of that oil via war I don't know dude yeah V-Bucks baby V-Bucks 
money is time. That's true, too. Money equals work. It is kind of, like, honestly, it is kind of fucking fascinating when you think about it. Like, just think about, like, generating billions. Because you can't even really contemplate what billions of dollars are, right? But, like, billions of dollars gets thrown around all the time, you know, spent on missile defense systems. and But then, like, you ha like to create things like missile defense systems, you have to, like convince intelligent people as well as like engineers and then the people that manufacture the goods and the people that dig up the goods you know what i mean all like all the logistics along the way to like participate in the creation of said product but the only way to get them to move is this like really interesting concept of like debt based spending that's just a number on a screen but that number on the screen represents like massive massive amounts of movement of people and their time and the goods that they're either digging up from the earth or turning into missile defense systems like it's it's actually fascinating cuz i don't know if I, I don't know how far back we go if you'd be able to accomplish things like this as effectively as you could without some sort of like money just really essentially being an idea Blake K with the five says, Joe, I love your live streams. Been listening to them for a long time. How long have you been doing them? From Alabama. Um, shoot, dude. I want to say, dude, I want to, let's go back. Today we go back, 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 back. I'm actually going to take a peek and see how many streams. Well, not how many, many, but how far back. Because I'm going to say like 2017. Schmerhaps. I have over on the streams playlist, I have over 564 streams. Which is absolutely fucking nuts. Wait, how do I get more? Oh, let's. Uh, wait, what if I click it or tick it? Okay, so you have to click the oldest ones before you can scroll down oh damn I missed this screen where it was like uh, I was in like a spaceship that one was sweet maybe I could get like Robin to like redesign that one. Oh my god all the way back even further I was like playing video game games while I was playing overwatch while streaming holy shit fuck that game um Jesus. Six years ago, yeah, two th July eighth, two thousand seventeen. We worked really hard to get to five hundred concurrent viewers. <laughs> no, I don't know. It is what it is though. I'm happy you guys are here. Grandma, thank you for the gift or two, Miss Bunny. Bop it or twist it? Definitely twist it. As everybody passes around a big old wiener. <laughs> yeah, Jacob claims me as a dependent. Probably. I hope so. He deserves a good tax cut. Video game piss stream. I, you know, I did actually have a really good time playing, like, those horror games where you, like, run around, you know, run away from shit and kind of, like, solve puzzles. I think it was Layers of Fear we played the one time, and I will honestly say, I, I remember watching it afterwards, and I even enjoyed watching it, because I just, I get so scared. I get so freaking scared, dude. I'm such a scaredy cat. Okay. Some of them used a mechanical keyboard, which is exposed at night, and I have a MacBook Pro, and my keyboard isn't exposed because at night I close the PC, as I said. In the sense, I shut the screen above my keyboard so it's not exposed to air. But please, help me figure this out, because it's freaking me out. And Meek, welcome to the Butter Sock Cult. You now have access to bonus content. Thank you. been watching a lot of your five-year-old streams where you show 
drawing in Photoshop while telling the stories. I had those in on stream, or was it just old videos? Because I do remember people drawing on old videos as like background. Wart, wart, wart. What's up, mercenary? Grandma, thank you, thank you. Good to see you. Bring the ruckus. Bring the motherfucking ruckus. A woof, a woof, a woof. A woof, a woof, a woof. Okay. Woke up to my re. Okay, I'm cur Okay, here we go. I'm currently staying in a farmhouse in Northern Ireland. It's a pretty old place and apparently was built on top of the original one, according to the owner of it. I never really have believed in any paranormal type stuff, just thought it was too crazy and far-fetched to be real, and I've been telling myself that for the past few hours after what happened. I've already mostly explained what happened in the title, but I'll go into more detail. I woke up to hear the radio next to my bed, which I didn't even know worked, playing random channels, songs, some talking on chat shows or something. I can't really remember as I was just waking up. The radio did finally stop changing channels after a few seconds, however, and was left playing the song Hello by Dragonette. Had to look that up in the morning from the lyrics that I heard. I heard this section of the song before I switched off the radio at the plug. Kind of like this thing, but there's something you should know. I just came to say hello. Hey, I could stick around and get along with you. Now, needless to say, I was already crapping bricks a bit at this point, not because of the lyrics or anything. Like I said, I don't really believe in ghosts. Rather, just the loud noises waking me up was a little rough, and so I felt on edge. The thing that really tied it all together for me and made me so scared was when I checked my phone and it was 3.33 a.m. I moved upstairs to another bedroom and sat up with the lamps on either side of me for hours, watching something on Netflix to take my mind off of stuff. I don't really know what I want out of posting the... <sighs> Nationwide 911 outages reported. Stay safe, everyone. Really? Nationwide not Nationwide? How the fuck does it... 911, okay, so this was April 17th at almost midnight. 911 outages reported in at least four states across the U.S. South Dakota is experiencing a statewide outage, according to police. At least six cities in four different states across the United States reported experiencing 911 call outages Wednesday evening, according to officials. The entire statewide emergency call system in South Dakota experienced an outage. Pier Police confirmed to ABC News. Sioux Falls Police encouraged residents in South Dakota to call 605-367-7000 if they were experiencing an emergency. Las Vegas, Nevada also experienced an outage, though not reported statewide. Police in Henderson, Nevada urged residents to text 911 if emergency are happening. Rapido SOS is working. If you call, we will see your number and call you right back. Henderson Police Department posted on Facebook. Rapid SOS. Oh, is that a thing? How do you access that? Dundee County, Nebraska, and surrounding areas were experiencing outages, the sheriff's office said on Facebook. The non emergency line was working as well as 911 texting police. Multiple cities in Texas also had outages, including Del Rio and Kilgore. Kilgore Police Department posted on Facebook to experiencing intermittent outages and urged residents to call 903 983 155. Five nine extension one to report any emergencies. Interesting. Do you think it's like a hack, or like hackers, or like some sort of cyber attack? I'm like half expecting that to be like a thing this year, right before the election. Just a bunch of cyber bullshit. It's so annoying. I hate election years, dude.
I don't really know what I want out of posting this experience. Maybe some reassurance to tell me that it's all BS. Edit. Things just got a little bit more spicy. I wrote the first part of the post from the upstairs bedroom in the morning and just came down from upstairs to the room this happened in and looked at the radio. It was off on the wall switch, but the radio setting was also turned off on the radio. The only way it can actually play the radio stations is by switching it to on and on the radio with the switch so it wasn't hitting. What? The only way I can actually play the radio stations is by switching it to on and the radio with a switch, so... What? It was off on the wall switch, but the radio setting was also turned off on the radio. The only way I can actually play the radio stations is by switching it to on on the radio with a switch, so it wasn't me hitting it while sleeping or something. <laughs> okay. Wait, Wolf Girl, are you in the are you in the states of South Dakota and Nevada and shit that got hit with the outage? A lot of cyber crap in here in Vegas. Interesting. How much longer? Uh we got one, two, three, four, five after this. Fucking hell. It was off on the wall switch, but the radio setting was also turned off on the radio. The only way it can actually play the radio stations is by switching it to on, on the radio, with a switch so it wasn't me hitting it while I slept or something. And now, I'm kind of spooked out. Fuck, that sounded weird. And now, I'm kind of spooked out. I love you so much. Thank you, Dre, Dre, Dry, Renee, Chonky upload. Yeah, it should be a good one. Pretty, pretty solid pack of stories. Oh wow, it's almost one. Fucking hell, I gotta go to Better's. This was a while back, but it still bothers me to this day. It was 2016, and me, 22, and my husband, 28, were moving into a rental home. I was six months pregnant, and we were thrilled to move into a nice community since before we had lived in a pretty sketchy part of town. We didn't know much about this rental except it was in a good school district, a low crime area, and within our budget. Time passes without any problems, and soon our son was born. His birth was textbook, and he slept well in the hospital. This all changed when we brought him home. The first night home was awful. Every time we set him in his crib, he screamed. And I'm not talking a normal, I'm hungry or need a new diaper cry. A legitimate scream like he was in pain. My husband and I had to take shifts at night so one could be with him and the other could sleep a little. My shift was always second and started around 2 to 3 in the morning. I tried my best to sleep, but shortly after my son's birth, I began having horrible nightmares. I would dream nightly about my son being hurt or needing me, and I couldn't get to him. At about six-week checkout. At my six-week checkup, I told my OBGYN, and she believed that I was having postpartum anxiety and prescribed me some medicine and recommended that I see a counselor. Weeks passed by since starting the medication and counseling, and I was still having nightmares, and my son was still screaming all night long. 
His pediatrician told us that it was colic and that we just needed to wait it out. Everything changed when he turned three months old. His screaming continued but started to be all day instead of just at night. My nightmares became much more specific. One night I dreamed that I walked into my son's... One night, I dreamed that I walked into my son's room and he was on fire and screaming. Though I was in his room, my feet were stuck inside his doorway. I couldn't move or speak. I could only watch my son screaming in pain. I woke up screaming and hyperventilating. My husband ran into our room and tried to console me. In the next few days, I could not sleep. I spent most of my days at work and my evenings sitting on my front porch talking to my next door neighbor. She was the sweetest old lady who had lived in this neighborhood since it was originally built in the 70s. I guess she could tell something was wrong and asked me if I was okay. Reluctantly, I told her how my baby had been acting and how I was having horrible nightmares. She was sympathetic and asked me to elaborate, and I didn't feel comfortable telling her the details, so I just told her that I had dreams about fires in the house. Her face quickly changed from caring and concerned to horrified. Seconds of quiet felt like hours before she spoke again. Do you know what happened at this house? She said, and I told her no. She sighed and looked down before grabbing my... <clears throat> <laughs> she sighed and looked down before grabbing my hands and looking at me. She goes on to tell me that a few years ago there was a fire at the house due to some faulty wiring done poorly by the landlord. There was a young family with a three-month-old baby living there, and unfortunately the baby passed away in the fire. She said the couple moved away and the house was renovated and put up for rent after. And at that moment, I was in complete shock. I ran inside to my husband holding our baby and told him that we needed to leave. He must have seen the fear in my eyes since he didn't ask me to explain myself until we got in the car. I explained what happened in the house and how I felt like my dreams were warnings that we needed to leave before something happened to our baby. Luckily, my brother-in-law lived in the next town over, so we went there. The first night we stayed in his house, our son slept through the entire night, not a single peep. I checked on him every hour since it was so unusual for him to sleep this well, and from then on, apart from normal baby stuff, my son never screamed again like he did in that house. My husband packed our stuff and we stayed with my brother-in-law until we were able to get out of our lease and rent a new place. I never went back and I will never go back. I just pray whoever moved in there will pray for. I just pray for whoever moves in there next. Uh Okay, we're moving, we're grooving, we're pooping, in a, in a big toilet. You know, because these last four are a little shorter than normal, me thinks that I might take a quick break and get my magnesium before bed, and I'll be right back. BRB.
All hail Plankton. Bill and Ted fan hasn't seen the Bill and Ted face the music from 2020. It's free on YouTube right now. Recommend as first five minutes at least. I'm a huge fan and love the movie. Nice. Yeah, I saw that uh, Keanu Reeves was going to be Shadow the Hedgehog <coughs> in Sonic 3. Okay. All hail Plankton. How about a fuck? Dude, I feel like I'm gonna be sleeping with the freaking whites on tonight. About a one and a half year ago. <laughs> that sounds so funny. About a one and a half year ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally what's written, but it just uh, it just sounds so funny. About a one and a half year ago, I'm talking uh, about uh, one and a half year ago. I was hailing Plankton when do a shadow impression. Let's see what does shadow sound like. I can't wait for like Keanu Reeves to just sound exactly like his fucking self. No, like not even trying to make like a new voice. Oops, I just typed Shadow into YouTube. Shadow, the Hedgehog. Hmm. Hmm. I just love Latinas, Sonic. Dude, Shadow driving a cool motorcycle with a gun. That's so freaking cool. Is he from another dimension? Just the idea that, like, Sonic went from, like, this, like, side-scroller world with, like, Dr. Robotnik to, like, being a sort of three-and-a-half-foot humanoid anime hedgehog in a world with a bunch of like other anime style humans I don't know just the crossover is really funny okay can I just get the voice fucking shit it's like all these fucking silly dubs and mute like who's made who's like staying up all night making fucking shadow the Ho hodge hag fucking music videos he's still very powerful Bidet or no? Yeah, definitely bidet. I heard bidets are really cool. I don't have one, though. What kind of monster is this? Is that his voice? That doesn't seem right. What kind of monster is this? I sound like the guy from... Smithers. Burm, 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 burm. My name is Shadow. My name is Shadow. Since you were so kind. Alright, whatever. Not a big fan of that one. Why does that name haunt me? Why does that name haunt me? It's the only thing I can remember. <laughs> It's kind of, it's very anime, you know what I mean? Like, it's very, it's like a lot more, like, introspective and thoughtful than I thought it was going to be. I can't, I kind of forgot about uh, Shadow, but his, his character definitely sounds like it has a lot more depth to it than just being, like, a tough guy. Who am I? I'm the same creation arc as Mewtwo. What's in my butt? Alright, whatever. 
Is there another one? All right, this one. Through a random robot we picked up off the street. Say he's doing pretty well. That sounds like the teacher in Fairly Odd Parents. Yeah, I've done that. Fairly Odd Parents! Face! Yeah, sometimes I can do the scream. Fairly Odd But I can't really do it right now because now you make me want to hear it. Fairly Odd Parents! Wait, what does he say? Fairies! Fairies! Uh, God damn it. Scream. Or no. God damn it. Very God. Very up. Uh, no. Fuck. Very God parents. Scream. Isn't there just isn't it just called Scream? The teacher. <laughs> My God. <laughs> Fucking JoJo Siwa dressed up like a kiss character is so funny. Uh Scream. Teacher. Oh, Mr. Crocker. Wait, he walks into class naked? Oh, getting dressed! Sorry I'm late! Invisible? Fairy godparents! <laughs> Jojo Siwa! Ah! Ah, Jojo! <laughs> ah, she's naked! Ah! <laughs> Fairy godparents! Sound just like him. Thanks. <laughs> That's when I can like practice. I love yelling it. Like I can't really yell. There we go, parents. <laughs> it's like, but it's it's really funny to yell. Crocker croc blocked. That's hilarious. That it, episode name that. It's cool. I miss whenever like shows could get away with just being a bit naughty. <laughs> You know, just do some fucking silly adult stuff. There's only adults would be able to see. All right. <laughs> About a year and a half ago in June, my brother and I were driving back from Ely, Nevada to Las Vegas. If you know Nevada, you understand how sparsely populated the state is outside of Reno, Carson City, and Las Vegas. So, we were about an hour or so into the drive when we realized that we wouldn't make it back without falling asleep, as it was already pretty late at night. We agreed to stop at a hotel for the night. We came to a town called King. I had never heard of King, Nevada, nor have I found anything about it since, so no matter what I looked up or asked, it looked like one of those old western towns from where it... Wait, what the fuck was that hole? That confused me. I just need to hear you say, You're a good girl! You're a good girl! Uh, you're a good girl! Uh. In the fairly odd parent voice. Uh. You're a good girl. You're a good girl. S Shadow. Hey guys, it's me, Shadow. Be a good girl and eat your vegetables. I can't even highlight this shit. What the fuck? What am I doing? Um, we came to a town, okay. We came to a town called King. I had never heard of King, Nevada, nor have I found anything about it since, no matter what I looked up or asked. It looked like one of those old western movie towns where it's one road with little buildings on each side and about the same size as one of those towns. All there really was of note was the hotel that we stayed at called King Hotel and a McDonald's. The few other buildings didn't seem worth mentioning. We hadn't seen anyone or any cars while driving in the town. We went into the hotel and saw the only person we ever saw in that place, the single clerk at the front desk. We got our room key and went straight to bed. We were awoken by talking outside of what we assumed was around 8 because when we woke up, 
we realized that there was no clock in the room. In fact, there were only beds, a hotel, a shower, and a sink. Not even a dresser or a TV. We went outside to leave. The hotel clerk wasn't there to check out, so we left our key at the desk. No one else was inside the hotel or outside. We still haven't figured out where the talking came from. We went to McDonald's to eat, however it was drive through only. We ordered our McMuffins at the drive through then rounded the corner to pay and get our food at the next window. We saw the bag already sitting on the shelf outside the window with the window closed and the inside dark. We got our food and left without paying. We didn't want to stick around anymore, we were honestly getting a bit scared at this point. There was no cell service, nor did we remember ever arriving there. We just suddenly found ourselves in that town. I was reminded of this because a few hours ago, I read a green text about a similar experience someone had in Utah. We only saw one person there, the hotel attendant, and we drove for half an hour before we saw any road signs again. He and I both remembered exactly the same, so I don't think we hallucinated or anything like that. If you have any ideas on what happened in that town, please let me know. I was going to say, that sounds exactly like the fucking one green text that I read. That was obviously true as fuck. There you go, parents. <laughs> the stories are too scary. <sighs> okay. Home of the Good Burger. Can I take your order? Oh, yeah, Keenan the Kel was... Oh, fuck. Oh, yeah, that was a sitcom show, too, right? In front of a stage audience or whatever. Keenan the Kel was great. I miss that shit. I wish Kel could have gotten, like, a job on SNL. You know, Keenan's pretty good. And he's, like, apparently the longest-lasting crew member. And... Hasn't aged, either. He still looks like his fucking, like, 18-year-old self. Oh yeah, all that too. Fuck, all that rocked. One of Dan Schneider's best works. Sorry, bad joke. Do 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 do. As I'm sure some of you are aware, the hunting season for white-tailed deer is about to start this weekend. I'm a 25-year-old female and have been spending a decent chunk of time in the stand with my partner, in life and in most ventures generally, because we've discovered that hogs have been rooting up the oats and generally causing havoc and scaring away the deer from the feeder. We've gone out a handful of times in the last two weeks attempting to catch the miscreants at it, and fuck. Oh, what's up, Hawk? Keenan ended up doing better than Kel. Yeah, but it's just strange. Like, why the fuck couldn't he get Kel a job? Like, like what? Like all the other people they brought on to fucking SNL, and they couldn't get Kel a job. Maybe, maybe. Well, you know, they might have been like, well, that was too on the nose or whatever. Like, too much like previous stuff. But I always thought Kel was funnier than Keenan. I mean, I mean, they're both funny, but I always thought Kel was a little bit better. Maybe he talked too much. Maybe. Yeah, I guess it really comes down to a myriad of things. A myriad. Whoa, nice word, Joel. You got it figured out. Use the word myriad. We've gone out a handful of times in the last two weeks, attempting to catch the miscreants at it, and so far, no luck, and it's been very frustrating. At any rate, because of the hogs, I've been spending more time in a stand after dark than I ever have in my life. We've been up there from 9pm to 1am, 10pm to 2am, 9pm to 11pm, and every other weird time slot you can think of. I mention this just in case it's relevant or helps paint a better picture. There have been a few things that have happened that I've struggled to explain away or rationalize, and my partner is out of ideas, too. The first thing happened about a week and a half or two weeks ago. 
It was around one or two in the morning with a decent chunk of moon illuminating the area. I was only half paying attention to my surroundings because I had already written the night off as a bust when all of a sudden I become aware of a weird whirring or flapping sound. I thought it originated from somewhat behind me, but my partner said that he had heard it coming from away to the front left of us. At any rate, it was loud, airborne and passing quickly over us and away. I am very familiar with the sounds drones make and that wasn't it. It also wasn't a helicopter, the sound was too small if that makes sense. And it wasn't a bird, it sounded way too mechanical. It was flying very low, probably just above the tree line and we couldn't see anything. The second thing happened about a week ago. We weren't in the stand, but it was weird and out of the norm, so I'll mention it. We live on the same property that the stand is on, and it was around 9 or 10 at night when all of a sudden there was a distant boom, like an explosion, which hit our home with a very hard thud. If you've ever spent any time around heavy artillery or explosives, you'll know what I mean. It was strong enough that my sister-in-law, who lives down the road, called us asking what the hell just happened. It could have been a natural gas explosion, but the weirdest part is that my partner did some internet digging and a local emergency management website had posted asking for any info on an unknown explosion back in 2016 during that time of year, and we still have no clue what it was. And then lastly, tonight. We were out in the stand once again, and it's gotten cold, and we've had a ton of rain all day, so everything was damp and dripping. We went out at 10, and it was about 10.30. I was preoccupied with trying to keep my fingers and toes warm when suddenly I became aware of a weird murmuring. My partner heard it too, but he was hearing damp. <coughs> Damp and dripping. You gotta Google how old Kel is. I think Kel's like 62 by now. I get, yeah, maybe it could be a transformer robot in disguise. My partner heard it too, but he was hearing damage, so I don't think he heard the full breath of the tones. To me, it kind of sounded like muffled voices off in the distance, like several someones having a conversation too far off to make out the individual words. But the direction the sounds were coming from doesn't have any buildings or dwellings, it's just woods and there were several different tones. My partner said it kind of sounded like a cow moaning, but not quite. There are cattle in the area, and we heard them vocalizing all the time. That wasn't that. And there isn't any grazing land in the vicinity of the sound's origins. They carried on for maybe 30 seconds, slightly rose in crescendo, and then died off and faded away completely. I want to stress how indistinct these sounds were. If I hadn't been listening intently, I don't know if I would have heard it. All of this, coupled with the general gut feeling that I have whatever I'm out in the dark alone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> An ass mouse. That would be really funny to go to a club and you're going to use the toilet and someone just shit out a mouse. And now you gotta deal with it. All of this, coupled with the general gut feeling I have whenever I'm out in the dark alone, has me wondering... I don't necessarily feel in danger, just generally watched and noticed. I have very good instincts and I try to listen to them. I'd love to know what you all think. There may be a rational explanation for all these phenomenon. All I know is, is I don't want to be another hunter with another creepy story. 
but I feel like I'm starting to see a bell curve emerge. What's in my flask? It's just the water. It's just, just, just fire water. It's just fire water. They lit it on fire. <laughs> that actually was the sound of the butt mouse dropping into the toilet. Bloop. Bloop. It's like. Okay. My dad moved into a house in the middle of the woods about two years ago. And I moved in with him soon after to help him get around and take care of the house and whatnot. A side note, it's an old house on land that Native Americans heavily inhabited in the south. Heavily inhabited. No side note. It's an old house on land that Native Americans heavily inhabited in the south. Honestly, this house is really weird. The first night I spent here, I was woken up by a woman whispering, Is anyone home? Right next to me as I was... Oh, God damn it, I can't find my pace with this shit. Honestly, this house is really weird. The first night I spent here, I was woken up by a woman whispering, Is anyone home? right next to me as I was about to fall asleep. My dad didn't believe me when I told him the next day. It's taken a while to get used to living in the deep woods, but something about this property is very off. There's been more than a few times where I've actually felt a heavy presence, almost like someone is standing right behind me. I have a cat who I rely on to alert me when there's someone approaching my room, and there have been times where he's alerted me but nobody was there. Other times, he stares at the same corner of my room with an expression that tells me that he can see something I can't. And there's been more times I can count where I'll be leaving a room and a cabinet will slam or it sounds like something was moved behind me. It sounds silly, but it's odd enough for me to notice. I mentioned it to my father, but he didn't think much of it until early this a.m. when he woke up and went downstairs to find the basement flooded. Somehow, the shower in the basement was turned on and the drain had been clogged. Neither of us used that shower in the basement, and he's now fully convinced that there's a ghost in this house. I don't know. If you ask me, I think it's more than the house. I get that feeling even when I'm out on a hike. I always leave food scraps and leftovers out in the tree line for the animals and sometimes coincidentally find little treasures in the same spot, almost like I made a trade with Mother Nature. Once I left strawberry cake leftovers out and the next day found a stone with a pink crystal formation. Another time I found an arrowhead carved out of stone. Just kind of a thought I figured I'd share. <clears throat> Fuck. Just kind of a thought that I figured I'd share. I'm always sharing my thoughts. And prayers. <laughs> oh. All right, guys, last story. I don't believe in ghosts or anything paranormal. I'm not religious or spiritual and just generally don't think any of that sort of exists. But tonight I encountered something that genuinely terrified me and can't form any sort of logical explanation for it. So I have a dog and I almost always walk her at night due to my schedule. I'm currently living with my parents who live in a very upscale private community, one which I'm extremely familiar with and have walked hundreds of times before both during the day and night. 
It's a very safe place, and I never felt any sort of risk walking at night aside from visibility to passing cars, which... <sighs> it's a very safe place, and I'd never felt any sort of risk walking at night aside from visibility to passing cars, for which I wear reflective armbands. Tonight I was taking my dog on her daily walk, and we crossed a road that led from one section of the subdivision to another. While entering this next section, I noticed up ahead about 80 to 100 meters a figure moving down the road across from the direction I was going. The best way I can describe it is if a person was wearing a slightly luminescent white hat skipping down the street. The problem is, first of all, there wasn't enough light to get a clear view of whatever I saw. I could definitely see the light that appeared to be a hat. Do you think any of the, do you think these stories are scary? Because like, a lot of the ones that get off, you know, that aren't like 4chan-esque ones within the paranormal experiences tend to be not that crazy, you know what I mean? And do you guys feel, like I'm just asking you, like from an entertainment perspective, do you guys feel, because I find that these type of paranormal stories that aren't that crazy, obviously they're, a little, they're quite a bit more believable. And I'm curious if you guys think that the maybe a little bit more calm, yeah, kind of, well, a little bit more calm, a little bit more collected, a little bit more believable style of paranormal presentations are still interesting, I guess. Yeah, definitely scary it would be scary to the person who experienced it, for sure. But I'm just curious if, like... Like, you really... If you really need, like, the 4chan style, like, in-your-face psychotic ones that, like, make you question, obviously, if it's, you know, just made-up nonsense. Or if you enjoy these, like, more nuanced ones that feel a lot more believable, you know? Okay. Sweet. I could definitely see the light that appeared to be a hat, if it was a person wearing one, but not enough to discern anything more, and the most disconcerting thing was that even if it was a person wearing a light-up hat skipping down the street, they would have been moving in slow motion, almost suspended in air in between jumps. There was also no sound either. After seeing this, I yelled out several times asking if there was anyone there and didn't get any response. At that point, I noticed that my dog was whimpering and her tail was between her legs. For me, this was the scariest part because I've never seen her act like that in any situation. If she sees another person while we're out walking, she'll get excited and pull on the leash wanting to go up and say hi. If there's another dog or animal she's unsure of, she'll bark and start running in circles around me. I have never, under any circumstance, seen her act scared and start whimpering. That was enough to make me go nope and turn the hell around. Like I said, I don't have any belief in anything paranormal, but I have no intention of messing around with whatever the hell I had just encountered. And so we turned around and finished our walk. I immediately glanced behind me, frequently making sure that there wasn't anyone following, and we're now home safe, which leads to me typing this right now. I've never experienced something like that, and I have no idea what to think. Rationally, I think it would be more likely I hallucinated or something rather than it being anything paranormal. But the thing that bugs me the most is my dog's extremely uncharacteristic reaction. If I had been seeing things, then why would she have behaved in a way that she had never before? I just wanted to share my story here and hopefully I don't sound insane. Sunshine in a jar. Which story was the sunshine in a jar one? I don't remember that one. 
I do remember like the rock people that stuffed that homeless guy into a tree. That was a good one. What's the 4chan scary stories? Well, the 4chan ones is from a website called 4chan, and it's like all anonymous and stuff. And some of those ones tend to be, that's like where the actual origins of the term creepypasta came from. Because people would type up some like really kind of outlandish type of experiences and people would be like, oh, that's just a creepypasta. Any para-abnormal stories? What's that? Oh yeah, but yeah, we have reached the end here, so I'm going to read our outro right quick. Have you read My Wife Keeps Peeking at Me from Around the Corner? I have not seen that. That would fuck me up if I saw. I always thought that would be a super creepy, just visual, getting peeked around a corner on. Okay. Let's read this outro script, and you guys got to think of something funny for me to say. Hey friends, thanks for listening. Click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. I release new... Vi I was going to say new windows. I release new videos every Monday and Thursday at 7 p.m. EST, and there are super fun live streams every Sunday and Wednesday night. If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, r slash letsreadofficial, or over email at letsreadsubmissions at gmail.com, and maybe even hear your story featured on the next video. And if you want to support me even more, grab early access to all future narrations and bonus content over on Patreon, or click that big join button to hear about the extra perks offered for members of the channel. And check out the Let's Read podcast, where you can hear all of these stories and big compilations located anywhere you listen to podcasts. All links in the description below. Thanks so much, friends. And remember... Good Burger is the home of the Good Burger. Can't take your order. Hope you have a good night. Remember, you might be blowing a ghost. <laughs> Luigi plays with the Luigi board. Don't let Luigi... Play with it. Always take care of your ass mouse. <laughs> yeah, we'll do that one. Thanks so much, friends. And remember to be a good girl and eat your vegetables. All right. Well, guys, appreciate you. Thanks for hanging out. Always a good time. I always enjoy the paranormal stuff. This one went a, quite a bit longer than normal, but it's all good. Um, I will go ahead and get these up edited over on Patreon first thing tomorrow. It's only a buck a month over there for early access. Otherwise, I will get it up on YouTube. Same time, same place. 7 p.m. EST. And then I will be back streaming again this coming Sunday, so I hope you can set that notification bell for when I go live and be kept up to date when I go live by following me on Twitter, at Let's Read, and Instagram, at Let's Read dot official. Yes, 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 yes. All right. Have a delightful day or night wherever you are on planet Girth, and I will see you guys all again very, very soon. Bye-bye.